Oh, okay. <laughs> We're live. Hello, can you uh, test your mic? We have here... No... How, how should I call you? Should I call you no Noblesse or Decisive Pete? Uh, in, in Skyrim community, I'm known as Noblesse, mostly. Noblesse, okay. I, I just have so many accounts. Uh, people are usually like... Yeah. can't recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you're, you're, you can be like, you know, um, some of the other people like might not recognize you because like you have many accounts and like, oh, uh, I'm not, if you're probably streaming, they won't be able to like stream snipe you, right? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's the reason too. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um. Well, um, so guys, uh, for those of you who are watching, hopefully, um, you have seen the um, updated cards over at the Skyweaver Facebook stream, and as well as the uh, Skyweaver Twitter, wherein you can see a lot of our creators for our Skyweaver ambassadors are already. Uh, have already released or um, uh, revealed some of the cards for Clash of Inventors, which will be uh, our uh, incoming expansion. There will also be another discussion, to, I think, tomorrow or the day after um, of uh, the new cards as well from the community and the devs as well. But yeah, um, this will be our initial or uh, card review, uh, and it will be featuring uh, one of our... Uh, uh, I mean, he introduced himself as uh, one of the highest uh, ranking discovery players over at Skyweaver with four accounts already in top 10, if I remember correctly. And, yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, he's called uh, Noblesse. And over on Twitter, you can also follow him at Decisive Beat. And yeah, I have a few questions for you, though. Um, how many um, years or months have you been playing um, Skyweaver? Skyweaver, dude. Uh months i started playing at december 2021 mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, okay, okay it's when the economy went live i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like somewhere up there oh okay so uh december 21 2021 that means around eight months yeah something like this seven eight months how do you spell noblesse is it n-o-e bell b-l-e-s-s-e well Different people uh, spell it differently. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna put it no bless. <laughs> sure. Okay, N O E B L E S S E, right? Okay. Right. So you you're gonna be on the mic right now. It's uh, gonna be no bless. Um, he prefers not to use a uh, uh, a camera, so it's gonna be okay. That's going to be our special guest right there. Yes, no no bless, <laughs> right? <laughs> Someone on the chat is saying no bless. Yes. But also, he's actually really blessed in terms of the discovery. But now, the rules for this card review is going to be a bit simple. We're going to be breezing through the whole like uh, card selections over at the Clash of Adventures. I made a, you know, I made a slideshow just for this one. So you have to give me props, guys, because you know it's not it's not an easy feat. I have to like go and download all the cards and put them into the slide. So that you guys can just, you know, chime in what you think is going to be uh, how good is this card, how bad is this card. But we're going to give our also our two cents. Me from a moderate player, Noblesse being more of the um, experienced discovery player and also um, somewhat constructive player as well. More experienced than me. Uh, I, I have been playing a lot of CCGs as well. Uh, been dabbling and started with the... Um, uh, I started with the Hearthstone and then went to uh, Legend Frontera and then some artifact which I regretted and then uh, went into Yu-Gi-Oh! Now I was playing also Skyweaver, Marvel Snap. So anything CCG, I could would probably be able to understand it except um, MTG. But um, yeah, let's go in and start right now. Um, let's kick it off because of course we don't want you guys to wait. And this is the whole Clash of Inventors revealed cards that will be played uh, uh how what's the what's the release date noblesse do you, uh, do you have do you remember what uh, when it's going uh, to be like yeah, sure it's july 7 july 7 so that's around five yeah. days from now here i'm not july 7 it's six days i think from you so mm -hmm. yeah so it's gonna be in less than a week uh maybe you will be able to find uh, some of your decks uh that can be fitting for these cards and uh we now have 
uh, some of our viewers right now from the Sky Weaver community, and hopefully you guys can chime in and give some give some of your opinions over in chat. Okay, so um, here we go. Um, let's go on for our first card now here. So um, right now we have BFR nine thousand one, and uh, it's ten cost eight eight summon and glory. Give units in your hand. And other ally units plus two plus one. Now on its own, um, on discovery, uh, noblesse will give a score one to five. Five being the highest, one being the lowest, and also for constructed. What do you think about this card, noblesse? Um, if it will be like in the current sky Viver, it will be the best uh, discovery cards in the game. Mm -hmm. Not even in the strength prism, but in the whole game. Mm -hmm. It's just very efficient. Dash as a mechanic in the discovery is just very strong on its own. Mm -hmm. And the amount of stuff this unit provides is actually a fucking unbelievable. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's 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 you, it's good if you have a good board, right? So, like, you're getting plus... Uh, and also getting a dash as well. So that's going to be helpful. And um, for those of you guys who don't know dash... Um, can you explain to them, uh, Noblesse, what Dash does? Dash is that minion, when it gets summoned, can attack into units, but not into phase. Yeah, so this is how it works. Yeah, it's like and it's I, like a ready minus one. It's like a, a weaker ready. Is, it th is that correct? Yeah, right. Yeah, and so, I mm. also wanted to mention that mm. stealth is a pretty pretty common mechanic in the discovery right now like many units have stealth mm -hmm. and the with the introduction of dash mechanic mm -hmm. stealth kind of loses its uh, yeah. significance i understand i feel yeah. like yeah i understand Let's, you if you have a dash mechanic like um it may uh give you one more hit that can possibly make your uh other units hit the uh the champion and then of course uh possibly hit the Stealth, that's right. Is that is that the correct order, uh, Noblesse? Right. You, you can just like uh, reveal the stealth units with your hero by attacking for one damage. Yes, and that's right. You can just kill any stealth units. So yeah. So uh, it, it really looks like it's downfall of the stealth trade in this game. Like it, it it's really weak right now. Stealth mm -hmm. as a trade. But yeah, what do you think? It's it. Uh, what's your score for this? Uh, for discovery and for uh, for constructed. Discovery is five definitely constructed. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty hard to get a real use for it. Yeah, like it, it's probably just not doing enough for ten mana in constructed as I imagine, unless you can cheat it out somehow. Yeah, which might happen with newer cards. You know, you, you can probably just get the the, the 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 value of this down to make it more valuable for constructed, right? So if you find a way to like uh, this. Uh, to just get down the 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 cost because it's ten. Like I can actually get the value of this if I have a lot of units on board. So I'm guessing maybe still good in terms of value. It I think it's gonna be a three for me for constructed. So yeah. Um hopefully I agree on three for constructed. Hopefully you get you guys can find a way to make this stronger. But now moving on to the next card we have body snatcher. Um uh, uh, it says Play steel target enemy unit. It gains guard, death. Give that unit back. So, um, yeah, very good. Uh, uh, if your enemy has like a guard or the other side of the board, and you can, uh, you it's too big for you to go through. You can actually steal that unit and then just go on and hit the champion in the face. But, um, what do you think? What's this, what's your thoughts about this? Uh, what are your thoughts about this? Uh, the bless. Uh, the main point of this card is that it has stealth and it has barriers. So this card protects itself because the stealing unit also gets a guard. Mm -hmm. So it's not really easy to kill this unit to get your minion back. But there are also some pretty pretty good combos. Like you can return this card to your hand mm -hmm. with take flight from heart. Mm -hmm. Or you can just silence it, which works too. Mm -hmm. I mean, silence doesn't work every single time because mm -hmm. it can be overwritten, but mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. that's a pretty good yeah. thing to do. And mm -hmm. even if this card doesn't work as intended, uh, it's still kind of kind of okay. It's like 
applying a daze for one or two turns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. yeah, mostly you just wanna silence this or return this to your hand, mm -hmm. or you're you're just like thinking that your opponent can deal with it because it has stealth and barrier. Yeah, that's the nine point. But in discovery, it really looks like too situational to me. Mm -hmm. So I would give it around two, maybe mm -hmm. even one. Mm -hmm. I'm closer to two. It this card would have definitely been better in the hard prison in discovery. Mm -hmm. In intellect, mm -hmm. it's really hard to make it work. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the the stat line right now is kind of hard for it. Like you know, um, it's a bit uh, low. I um, mean the. The stealing factor is like looks a bit um um good, right? You know, you can steal an like any target enemy unit and just make it uh possibly protect uh you. But um the one factor that I want to make sure is that if that unit dies from any attack, will it get will it go back to the opponent's side uh, coming from the graveyard? What do you think? No, surely not. Right, like it you know, work like this. yeah, it should it should work like that, right? So it steals it, then when it uh, when body snatchers not uh, body snatcher dies, it can go back to the opponent's side again. But uh, of course, um, this could be a nice finisher for any like aggro. Uh, I think uh, maybe, or uh, yeah, I think you know it it could be a finisher like um if you have an aggro card uh, or, or aggro deck in. Put this on for any big, uh, big guards, and then or big guards, and you steal that one, and then uh, puff this up, um, get the buff with the uh, get the get the buff for your board as well, just to make sure that they don't die, and yeah, but yeah, I'm not. I think it's a bit too late. If you uh, there's already a four cost card that goes through the uh, goes through the guard, right? Um, I don't remember the name of the card, but I have been uh, able to use it. Yeah, it's like you know you can go through the the guard. So, but yeah, this, there are a lot of cards that can uh, actually be better uh, for the cost here and the, for the stat line. So I think it's still a two for me. How about for constructed? What do you think? It's still, is it gonna uh, be constructed? Is more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Like you can pretty consistently play play take, play take flight on this unit, mm -hmm. so just remove the death effect. Mm -hmm. The application is kind of fringe. I think it's still too weak for construct. I think it's even weaker in constructed than in discovery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, if, I would give it one. If you if you like um have um a total like mind control style of uh play uh without any punish because there's a punish here, guys. They have to give that unit back. That's gonna be like total punish. You have to like uh have another card to make this. Uh, have no uh no punish right uh you can as you said like uh like uh, remove the uh, the death effect it would be good but yeah I think this will be like it's it's in the lower yeah you'll have to find a certain niche for this one um just to make it work let's go on for the I, next card yeah how uh, about you, how about you I, have a, I have one more thing to mm -hmm. talk about this card like mm -hmm. one good application it might it might be able to achieve is that you can steal the dash unit and immediately trade it into something else. Yeah, so for sure. So if your opponent has exactly two units and like one of them has dash, mm -hmm. this might work, but I still feel like it's way too situational. Yeah, like, you know, so, you, you know, one thing, one target you, that you would want to target is like this one. <laughs> right? You target the BFR right there and just make it attack everyone anyway. Uh, attack anyone on the side of the board for your opponent, but yeah, but yeah, it's it's still situational indeed. Uh, very very vulnerable for any target removals as well. But yeah, let's go on to the next card. It's gonna be Buster Squire Stealth Unit. As your left or right most unit attacks, give it plus one power. So this is kind of a um a board buff only when it's present on the board, and it's also stealth. So you might want to make sure that it doesn't uh, try to attack as well, um, or try to uh, put it on a very on a vulnerable position. But what's your score for this one, um, uh, Noblesse? I would give it five and five in both modes. I think it's mm -hmm. probably one of the better aggro cards presented mm -hmm. in this expansion. 
yeah free health with stealth and the effect is just it's snowballing really really hard and yeah. it also has a like, really good attachment like on the very least you can like call it a two mana free free stealth which yeah. is snowballing every single turn yeah. i think this card is absolutely ridiculous yeah in I think, most. you know i i think so too with this type of card um that it would be like you know a good um how do you say it's a good uh a good turn two or good two mana drop because if most likely won't die and he, it's also good most uh it gets most of the 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 benefits of the potential if there are other um units on the board so yeah really good it's it's uh, as you said it's an aggro piece man five out of five there is also one application you can mm -hmm. give to this card you mm -hmm. can summon some dash units like mm -hmm. and you can get a lot of a lot more than plus two power on mm -hmm. a single turn mm -hmm. like there are some cards that spams a lot of dash units mm -hmm. and you can get a lot of power on a single turn like mm -hmm. numbers can be up to like plus eight power on a single turn mm, that's oh yeah that would be cool for uh, if this happens but yeah, it would be good. Uh, the good uh, controlling factor would be left or right most unit attack. So <laughs> that's one thing that you would uh, have to be more aware in terms of your positioning of your units as well. So that would be quite... This this one, I would possibly put it one of my aggro decks. But next one would be the uh, Crystal Restorer. Okay, when an ally unit dies, give the lowest health unit in your hand plus two plus one. So this would be, uh, I think, beneficial if um, you're, you have uh, some other units on the board that would you would uh, like to trade. I'm thinking, what do you call that? Um, that wasp to one that has a uh, wither. Um, uh -uh. I forgot that wasp. Does anybody know it? Do you know it? The uh, yellow check you mean? Um, what's the name? Um, I forgot. But uh, uh but it uh, it 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 attacks a random unit right it attacks a random unit uh on the board on your opponent's that's side yellow jack uh, yeah yes yellow jack there you go yellow jack yeah so that's um that would be a good target for this one uh for the next few turns since it has stealth right? but how about you um what do you think of this uh noblesse uh this card is uh probably supposed to work the best with the dash mechanic mm -hmm, so yes. you can summon a bunch of dash units on the turn and try them into enemy minions to mm -hmm. get the procs of this unit mm -hmm. uh i think the stats are good to play in discovery like mm -hmm. five mana four five stealth some mm -hmm. okay attachment okay text so it's at least in a three or four for discovery mm -hmm. Yeah. Unconstructed though, I'm not sure if this card has much application. Like it really feels very situational. Mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, you need to get an exactly game state where you're trading your minions into the opponent minions. And it's not happening too often in the constructed games in my opinion. Like mm -hmm. from what I'm seeing seeing mm -hmm. in this meta, mm -hmm. like it's mostly control. Yeah. So it's it's like you know you you would have to like um set up a, a possible OTK by just uh, propping up one unit on your hand that's possibly has ready, <laughs> right? You know yeah just, yeah. yeah yeah that's that's uh, that's kind of a bit hard to set up though. Yeah, it, it's not easy at all. Yeah, it's really really hard, man. But yeah, okay. Um, let's go on to the next card. We have a cyber sniper. When attacking, this unit takes no damage and ignores stealth and guard. Wow, okay, good. This is nice, man. You know, it has dash and uh, it takes no damage and ignores stealth and guard. Yes. Yes, how about you, man? Discovery, I think it's going to be a five. But <laughs> this it, is a good trading uh, card. I really dislike this card already. When I saw this... Uh... What? It's the most toxic card I have ever seen. It can just uh, <laughs> lock your opponent off, out of the game if he just doesn't yeah. have anything to deal with it. He, he'll just lose the game right on the spot in Discovery. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely fine for Discovery. It's not even debatable. It's it's Man. broken. I am pretty sure this get, that gets nerfed. It, it just shouldn't exist. Or maybe it doesn't get nerfed, but it shouldn't appear in Discovery ever. Yeah. 
Is this unconstructed less though? Yeah. Yeah. How about unconstructed? Uh, it kind of like imagine if you're playing some aggro mm. deck and mm. you're putting this minion into your deck and you're mm. playing against control. Why mm. do you have this minion? It just doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you're playing control, are you wanna play free mana minion? Not really. So mm -hmm. this card seems really weird for me. In constructed, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I'm betting this will not see play mostly. So mm -hmm. I would give it a two. But look at that man. Uh, how many units do you get that when attacking this unit takes no damage and ignores stealth and guards? Like free trade. And it also has stealth, so that that means it will not uh, easily die uh, unless uh, your opponent like uh, hits your uh, your champion's face first. But man, this is actually a free trade for a three one. Like even uh, you can actually uh, find some way to buff it up. Just put in like maybe um, one cost plus one plus two, and then just get in uh, make it uh, even bigger and gets uh, gets a trade off with another bigger unit. So. Uh, I think I uh, I think it's gonna be a bit like uh, maybe a three uh, still for constructed. I'm gonna have to probably set it up. I think aggro maybe for those uh, those uh, if you are going to be facing aggro uh, as well, going head to head that would be uh, a perfect situation uh, for the KSU scenario for this card. So yeah. Well, I believe this card has potential in yeah. constructed, but I'm just not sure if it fits every single meta. Yeah. But it it definitely has its place. It might be played. I'm just not sure, really. In the like, with the dash mechanic, mm -hmm. uh, I feel it can be a bit underwhelming in constructed, but we will see. Yeah, it can like you know, it can like it can shine a bit, but uh, it dies down after a while. <laughs> but yeah, let's go on for um the next card. We have Daredevil Pine Dash, Summon Gain Guard, and plus one power for each health your hero lost this turn. Okay, so you're going to have to set it up so that you can actually get some damage maybe, and then uh, put this down so that you can actually attack. Or um, Does it mean this turn when you summoned it, or the previous turn where your opponent attacked you? Or that, does it have to be within the same cycle or within your... Um, within your uh, turn, wherein you will go summon this. Um, it's exactly your turn. Yeah, exactly uh, your turn. Okay. It doesn't count your opponents. Okay. Uh, this card is uh, really, really um, overhyped, I would say, but mm -hmm. by the community. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of restrictions. And mm -hmm. if you look at it, it's a 2-5 dash. And it has some attachment. And... I just don't see how this card ever good in the aggro deck. Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't do enough to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, I think dash it's... is good. So, I mean, in discovery, if unit has dash, it's a good unit. It, it, it's whatever. Like, discovery, it's like four, maybe. But constructed, I just can't see a use for this card at all. It just seems very underwhelming for me. Like I I've seen like a, a lot of the um uh in a lot of the CCGs that the four cost two five with stat line and a possible gain of health uh gain of attack, uh conditional attack would not be quite as use as much use as it would uh, have been like you know it gains guard as well it would easily die, uh uh because of a uh, it would force your opponent to get the target the two five stat line is just basically seven for four. You would want to have at least an eight stat line for this to make to, uh, for this to work and just one yeah that would be the best case scenario for this one but yeah i think it's a bit underpowered um uh, yeah. it's possible to proc this uh, plus power uh, effect a bit more than one time but i don't think mm -hmm. it's ever happening in discovery and then constructed why would you do this like you you can do a much more powerful thing than this so even if this comes out as three five dash cards, mm -hmm. it's still not good enough. I wouldn't play this in any of my decks for sure. It just mm -hmm. doesn't seem powerful enough to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not. I mean, I've seen some cards with the same stat line with the same uh, cost that uh, it hasn't been played in the meta. But yeah, I, I have yet to see. Maybe the community will uh, prove us wrong on this one. But 
yeah, a bit low on our uh, score here. But now, moving on, dash for the cup has minus one cost for each health. Your hero lost his turn. Draw and summon two two-cost units. So minus one cost for each health. Your hero lost his turn. So if by any chance you attack a seven attack or like a four attack, a seven attack which would have zero, draw and summon two cost units. Give them dash. So what do you think about this card, uh, Noblesse? Uh, this card seems ridiculous if it works like... I imagining like yeah, if you're attacking a seven attack unit mm -hmm. and this health costs zero. If mm -hmm. it works like this, I, I'm just not getting it. It, it just OP straight up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess if we're playing constructed and we're playing aggro deck mm -hmm. and we're playing against control, it's not too easy to lose health. Mm -hmm. But if we're playing against like mirror aggro mm -hmm. or like generally against a deck that plays for board mm -hmm. it's uh, it's an easy condition to play it for very cheap mm -hmm. so yeah. i'm pretty sure this card has potential it, it does a lot for like even if you play it for like three or four mana it still does a lot and if, if you're playing it for zero it's definitely insane in yeah. discovery this this is pretty easy to play for zero mana like yeah. really really easy yeah and uh if this gets played for zero mana, the the advantage it gives is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm, so I'm mm -hmm. giving this five for discovery for sure. Yeah. Constructed, um, I would say four. Yeah, I think um you don't have like a a a specific situation wherein you can actually get this down to zero, except for the and when you that get it down to zero, you the the the. The trade-off is a bit underwhelming for me. We can actually get it down to maybe at least three, and that's going to be a good trade-off for your health. Because, you know, um, uh, I'm not sure if uh, most of the guys here know this, but um, uh, health is also a resource in CCGs. That's uh, that's uh, one mindset that you have to make, take into account. Health al always has to be a resource. It's like... Uh, health is a card that you would have to like uh, watch out for, and um, yeah, I think uh, I agree with um, with uh, Noblesse on this one. Uh, it's a bit hard to proc in constructed, uh, especially in the early rounds. I'm not sure if you would be able to use this on uh, like uh, what 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 kind of a deck would you use this uh, Noblesse? Um, as I mentioned, every single deck that plays Grim Reprisal. Do you know this card? Can you um? Can you give us a refresher of uh, that card? Uh, Grim Reprisal is one mana deal free, and your hero gets free damage too. So okay, let's imagine the situation. There is a 4-4 four, four on the opponent's board. You are playing Grim Reprisal and attacking it with your hero. Ah, and yeah. then you can play the card for zero mana. So there are some really good com uh, applications of this card, as I imagine. You can yeah. cheat it out as soon as yeah, turn yeah. one, actually. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, um, there is a one that gives you two potions that deals three damage to you, and then right. you, yeah, uh, right. Oh there yeah, are a lot of ways to cheat it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I actually play that card, man. That uh, gives you when it dies, it gives you two uh two vials that are metal, right? Metal spells. Right. It's that, uh, uh, mm, Doctor Vial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good uh, insight right there, guys. At how one case scenario. So yeah, maybe. And but I mostly use that kind of a card in a control deck. So how about um, maybe in a, an aggro situation? Um, yeah, yeah, I I know there is a card that actually gives you deals damage to you so that you can draw out uh, two fire cards. That's going to be two damage. And then if you um, uh, prop it up with the, the two um with two vials as well, that's going to be uh, exactly zero, right? At the cost of your health as well, but that's gonna be costing you at least four mana for that to work, right? <laughs> mm, I, I, I still think it's great. Like, yeah, it's really easy to play it to me. Like, if opponent has at least one minion, you're 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 good to go. Yeah, you're you're pretty easily cheating out at very little mana usually. So mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. this card is good to me. Yeah. So yeah, this looks like a good card to use maybe for, uh, but for our next one, it's going to be Desert Golem. 
this usually there's usually a desert golem but now this is the desert golem summon your opponent summons their leftmost unit from hand very dangerous card for me dude for a four cost card the the trade-off is a bit i don't know um maybe your opponent will have something big may have a bfr right there on the left hand no that's this is not this is a no for me how about you man i mean i i i don't like uh, having this these kinds of trade-offs unless you know the what is on the opponent's hand like um there's a one cost spell that uh, reveals the leftmost and the rightmost uh hands uh rightmost cards in the hand of the opponent right um I think the main application of this card is to kill the combo decks. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you can pull the Zam or you can pull the Electron or something like this to destroy your combo. Yeah. But, but like on average, this card is just a hot trash to me. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's very bad in Discovery. It's it's atrocious in Discovery. It, it, and it, yeah. as I imagine, it's uh, it's it has re really low use in Constructed. Like, if you're not playing against exactly combo opponents, this card does nothing. This is like a um, a kind of... A, it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's the actual intention of just destroying a combo deck. Destroying the, the lineup of combo deck. Zam, that, Zam's stat line is 3-3, three, three, right? 3-3 three, three with armor? Two, six. Uh, I know. Uh, and then that's the... That's the that's the one that I summon after using a uh, spell. That's a 3-3 three, three with the armor. But yeah. That would be very very situational though if you would like to do that you would also want to want to decrease your chances of uh hitting something big with this one so um you would like to um uh, possibly scout the opponent's hand um with some of the other spells but no nope, uh, you would that would be a um an add-on you would want some of the cards to like work by themselves not um, just like this one yeah that's a pretty cool side deck uh, cards for tournaments, I guess. Mm -hmm. But this will never be played in Blazer or Conquest, <laughs> I yeah. think. Yeah, like uh, for tournaments, open deck list, like, um, or maybe if you have a tournament meta that uh, uh, is very, very um, heavy on combos, yeah, then make sure that you would carry this. But if it's if it's like still scattered, then yeah, don't. <laughs> Well, let's go on for the next card. It's going to be Discover. Uh, draw your highest cost unit. Give it minus two cost. Now, this is a Zam. Zam card for me. So, But can we make Zam uh, work in the Strength Prism? I'm not sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Should it? Oh, no, no. I mean, I, I didn't look at the Prism. Okay. Nope. <laughs> I was looking I mean, at... We can yeah. play Strength Intellect. Yeah. But this will most likely not work. So. I... I I didn't. I was. I wasn't looking at the the prism. Sorry, but yeah. I mean, that would be good for it, that kind of deck, but it will not probably work. But you know, draw your highest cost unit. If, do you have any other units that uh, would be going for the strength prism? That would you, you would be a good target for this one. Uh, I think generally the theme for strength dispatch is cheating out big units. Mm -hmm. Like we will see some cards next that are trying to summon big cost unit for lesser mana mm -hmm. and uh, this goes to the same application you want to draw your robot i guess with this so you can play it two turns earlier mm -hmm. but it uh, i don't know it, it, it just sounds mm -hmm. underwhelming to me let, 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 let me go back good. to the bfr bfr this one yeah for, yeah. for eight for eight that will be good. I mean, in Discovery, it's just okay. It's one, like one mana draw card and the highest cost card. So it, it's free uh, in Discovery. Mm. Uh, I mean, the score for it is free by me. Mm -hmm. It's not good, but it's not. It's never bad. It's it's just an average card. Mm. I think it's... In can... Yeah. Uh, I can't really think of use, but maybe some combo players will figure something out and we'll make an OTK with this somehow. I, I'm not sure. I, hmm. Yeah, I think um, with these kinds of cards, uh, you would have to look at the value. It's 3 and then it's minus 2. So basically, it's 1. Right? Right. Um, right. So, 
um, the actual value of this card is one, just one mana because you subtracted two costs for a from a certain card over at the um, uh, over at from your deck. So it's actually uh, in in terms of power, I would think in terms of cycling, this would be actually a good card, right? So yeah, very very. It's it's a setup, man. You will have it's a good cycle card for me. Good setup card as well, and yeah, let's um see how well it does in the, the upcoming meta of Clash and Inventors. But now, looking at Double Trouble, this is going to be a a kind of a removal, uh type of card uh as well. Like summon a copy of target unit, it gains dash, and probably would want to get that copy to hit itself. I don't know, or maybe um. Um, try to find another uh, and hit itself if it has enough attack to kill itself as well that would be good um, but yeah what do you think about this Noblesse? I think it's the worst card of this expansion mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand this why does it cost 5? it has such a little application you can only target your opponent unit so if your opponent doesn't have a unit this card just can't be played Mm, and sure. even if opponent has a unit and you copy it and trade, it's just a strictly worse mort morsel blow that kills a unit for four mana. Mm -hmm. So I just don't understand this card. It seems really weak to me. I think it's just bad. It's uh, it says metal mimic with dash coming from Gettison. Yeah, but I think but metal mimic can be played on your unit. That's the point. Yeah. But this but is this tar this is the target for your, for your opponent. You have to have an opponent unit. So, will will this um considering its cost, uh and yeah, your opponent that has a like a, a good board state, would would it be a good investment? Mm, not really. Like not really. the board statement should be absolutely wild for it to be efficient. Yeah. I I just can't really see a use of it. I think if this card costed free mana mm -hmm. i would still consider not playing it even mm -hmm. at free mana at five mana it's unplayable to me oh yeah like, like in any mode it, it's just hot garbage <laughs> yeah it, hopefully like it gets uh, a lot more love in terms of the balances but yeah let's look at the i'm next pretty game. sure the previous card will get buffed i'm super confident this shouldn't cost five mana yeah I and mean, yeah I mean, maybe we can see like maybe there's some changes that will make it more playable as well and yeah look at the next card it's going to be draco impact summon your highest cost unit from hand give it dash right so draco impact summon your highest cost unit what what specific high cost unit would you want that doesn't already have a dash that would be useful for this one um you have everything have you uh, can you think of any card in mind? Um, no bless. Well, when you're cheating out anything that costs eight or more, it's already a good deal to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it, even if it has dash, it doesn't really matter. You're still paying less for a minion to summon it. You're discarding one card basically because mm. you're wasting this card and the minion in your hand. So this card costs your two cards to play. Mm -hmm. Uh, like even if you're summoning a BFR, mm -hmm. like the robot, it's still okay to me, even if it's not getting an extra dash. I think this card is just really efficient in what it does. But does the dash stack, right? Uh, as you're, uh, as Gerizen is saying here in SAV, you have said like, you get one dash and you can get another dash? Is that right? I mean, sure, but it just doesn't do anything. It's, it's just it's double dash. It's a single dash. It's a single dash, it doesn't stack, it doesn't get another attack, like multi-attack, right? No, no, no. Okay. So I'm kind of worried if that happens, because that's that's not that's going to be broken, man. If you find some kind of way to make a unit double attack... Um... Oh wait, there's one already, I think. There's a card that I have used that makes you attack, uh, makes a random unit attack. I think it's Vlad. Uh yeah, we have this card, right? Yeah, yeah. So like um yeah, if you that can also make, but it's random, so it's not really getting going to get make a double attack for a specific card. But yeah, of course, yeah, sure. Um, this will be um that would that's a good point, right? You would have to have, um, you would have to have this card and then use it to summon a unit from hand, and that unit 
has to be more expensive than Draco Impact for this to get the benefit, right? Uh, yeah, I just feel like it's really situational for Discovery. It might be good, but most likely it's just an average card. Mm -hmm. Even like slightly worse than average, I would give it two for Discovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Constructed, though, I feel like this card has a lot of potential with the current revealed cards. Mm -hmm. If you can cheat out some good minions for seven mana, I really think it's a good deal. And in Constructed, you can do it consistently. Yeah. But so in this dis one seems fine to me. But in Discovery... <laughs> no, no, no. In no. Discovery... <laughs> I'm better not seeing this card in my hand, but yeah. it, it might win a game sometimes. No, it's like basically well, a de yeah. it's dead card. It's like, oh, dude, why is this here? <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, it's like when you get when you use it in Discovery, it's like possibly a dead card. But yeah, let's move on to the next card. It's gonna be Dream Calling. Uh, draw and summon a unit with cost equal to one plus the number of elements in your hand. Now, I've seen um multi element decks uh in my ladder experience um what's that um i forgot the name of the the uh, ra uh the one that uh, you put in uh, multi elements in your uh your deck and that dragon gets this uh discounted um, basically yeah right so yeah what do you think um what do you think of this card uh, for dream calling it just kind of seems not really efficient i mean in discovery you can't really imagine using this and summoning more than a four or five cost even in the best case scenario mm -hmm. so in the discovery this card is just bad like really bad mm -hmm. it's it's probably two or mm -hmm. even one it, yeah it's bad constructed sure you can construct a rainbow deck mm -hmm. but then the problem is that it will really be inconsistent. You can't control your draws. So the elements in your hand will be all over the place and mm -hmm. you can't really consistently do anything with, with this card. Mm -hmm. I just think that it kind of overcosted by one mana, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So I would say this is a bad card. Mm -hmm. But with cards like Hydrate, you can possibly cheat out some a drop on turn four mm -hmm. but this will really rarely be happening mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i can't really see a use of it so i would say one in constructed yeah i'm in, i'm kind of confused as, as to how the, this will work summon a unit with cost equal to one plus the number of elements i don't know somebody explain this to me maybe in the future but yeah i it's making my brain hurt guys but yeah <laughs> I don't know how to, how this works. Like, draw and summon a unit with cost equal to one plus the number of elements in your hand. So if you have like five elements, different elements, it's going to be six, right? But you have to summon that specific six cost. Oh wait, so it's man, it's too situational. No, no. Really <laughs> situational. I yeah. Agree. I mean, you have to have this perfect situation, and you know, uh, you're you're gonna know. Just by looking at your deck, which ones of these decks are going to be summoned, right? So it's going to be minimum, right? Minimum, uh, uh, get it said, minimum is going to be a one cost and the trade-off is not going to be beneficial for you. But um, if you have four uh, four elements on your uh, deck, wait, equal to one plus the number of elements. But if you have, no, minimum is two cost. Dream Calling. Get it said, because... If you have like one element, like uh, for example, you have only metal, then you have plus one plus the metal, one one plus the one element right there. That's gonna be two. So you're gonna be but summoning. I don't have any cards in the hand. It's one cost. That's what is he trying to say, probably. Uh so you would have to have that card. In... Man, if this if this was uh, summoning something from your, uh, from your deck, that would be go. That would be cool. From your hand? No, no, no. It's from the deck. The draw and summon a unit with cost equal to one plus the number of elements in your hand. Oh, yeah. So, it... yeah. Okay, from the deck. Okay, so it's straight from the deck. That would be good. Okay. But, yeah, it's really situational is what I'm trying to say. I don't think this ever sees play. 
Ah, uh, the Edison says if it if, if it's if you have zero hand cards, but yeah, you wouldn't you would probably put this in something like uh, uh like just pulling all your cards on your on your deck and then just go ham on the value. But I don't know, I don't know how this will work. But uh, maybe some someone will find one of those deck doctors here from our community will just find out a way on just force a way for this to work. <laughs> but let's go on for the next card. It's gonna be Drillbot. Um, armor and dash when this unit attacks an enemy unit do any excess damage to the enemy hero trample that's a trample card right there if I uh, if I know it trample uh, it has a different name from from different uh, CCGs uh, trample overwhelm uh, call if you, if you must what do you think about this card uh, noblesse trample might be a next trait in the sky river but yeah not... It kind of doesn't fit in the current game, but uh, who knows? Uh, looking at this card, it's just uh, it's simple and efficient. Mm -hmm. it, it's just okay. Anytime it attacks, it, it does it efficiently. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you attack hero, it's an okay attack. You're attacking like some low cost uh, unit. Uh, excess damage goes to face, so it's good. Mm. It has armor, so it's really good when it's attacking like some one ones or something because it's and um, free trade, mm -hmm. and the rest of the damage goes to the opponent's face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, w what can I say? It's just an efficient card. I would rate it five in discovery, but the less side of five, it's it, it just really efficient in discovery. I can't tell much more than this. Yeah, constructed though. I'm really not sure if power level is here. Like, is this enough to be played in the aggro deck and construct it? Mm -hmm. I don't think so, but you can possibly buff this card a lot. Yeah. And then this card might see an application this way. If this gets like to 10 attack or something, yeah. this can do a lot of damage. Man, um, Gettison puts in uh, a suggestion here. What if you put Frostbite? To your opponent, this could actually be kind of a uh, additional um, two damage, right? Uh, if you give frostbite, right? So sure. that would be extra damage for your opponent uh, for your card uh, to go and trample uh, or go and uh, go into the uh, enemy hero's uh, uh, face, right? So, yeah, what do you think about that? Well, this might be useful, but I'm not sure if. It this exact situation will be ever encountered in the constructed but mm -hmm. yeah this might work sometimes i think the like when this card got created uh, the main application in mind was that this card should be buffed in attack mm -hmm. so it can do a lot of face damage i think that's the main application yeah it's just like you know this is mostly for me, a good trade card, but I can actually just try to remove it with a, um, with a sunder, man, easy. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. Because it, the fact that it has armor already, it's a, it's a sunder target. Chupongo is not here, man. I think he's asleep. <laughs> I was trying to like waking up, but no, he's not waking up. Uh, Alpha Sapphire. But yeah, maybe we can have him um when he wakes up. From wherever he is, but let's go on to the next card, Ether Lemur. We call this uh like um uh what do you call uh, what do you call that uh, animal Tarshir here in the Philippines and uh, summon uh, if your hand has a seven hoss or a higher card gain plus two power, and add Ether Whale. I I didn't put the Ether Whale. Um, do you know the Ether Whale spell? Or... Uh, it's eight cost that summons two units from your decks, okay. uh, from your deck, and like applies roots if it's not curve. Okay, so that's gonna be a uh, a good um, mechanic as well. This is kind of a, a uh, I haven't seen uh, this is what uh, from one of the other CCGs. This is called Behold. If you have like a, a specific cost card, or the Behold in the other CCG was eight. But now this one here is seven. If you have a hand that has a seven cost or higher card, gain plus two power and add ether whale to your hand. So what do you think about this card, um, uh, Noblesse? It's pretty weird to me. It's contradicting with itself. So you want to play it in a high cost deck, but 
this card costs two mana, so it's not a high cost deck already. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you play Ezreal when you have a deck with two cost minion? It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but like generally, if you have some like seven cost or higher card, it's just a free free dash. Mm -hmm. So it's a good card on its own. Like in Discovery, it's really great. It just has a lot of value packed in it. Mm -hmm. It gives you a card, and it's a free free dash most of the time. So this card is really good to me. Mm -hmm. In Skyweaver, you have a mulligan of seven to eight cards. Mm -hmm. So you can make this card work pretty much every single time. Oh, yeah. Because you see a lot of cards in the mulligan, mm -hmm. and you already know what you'll be doing in the game. Mm -hmm. So I think this card is really consistent in what it does. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not sure why it gives Ezreal to you. Uh, <laughs> This kind of seems weird to me. But anyway, this card is really good for sure. Discovery, it's four mm -hmm. at the very least and constructed. I'm pretty confident this will have a use because it's just good in its own. Free free dash for two mana. That's a good deal. Yeah. So it's uh, four for me. I don't think it's meta breaking or something, but it's a good. It's really consistent. Aren't you like opt by the um by the condition for to make it more uh to make it like a three three, like you have to have a seven cost card to make it three three. But would you put this down on turn two even if you don't have, like a a, a seven cost card, on hand? No, possibly no. Two mana one for a dash is uh, very specific. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll just wait for your seven cost most of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure, I was like, you know, it do if you don't get the value from it, it's not going to be a good um, investment right there. But yeah, okay, let's move on to the next card. Fair ticket, give target ally unit dash, draw a unit with equal cost to that unit. Yes, okay, uh, one cost, and also has banner, draw a unit with equal cost to that unit. So yeah, this is a good cycle card. It gives a unit dash and gives your uh, hero plus one attack as well. So, how about you, man? What do you think about this uh, card, uh, Noblesse? This card is very equal to On the Hunt. Uh, this card uh, has a banner and draws you a lowest cost fire unit. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, that. But yeah. this card also gives minion a dash, so that's an upside. Yeah, it's like an, a, uh, a power power creep, man. <laughs> well, On the Hunt can be used. Yeah. Can be used more than one time. Yeah. And fair tickets on the one time. Yeah. Uh, in discovery though, this card is definitely overpowered. It's, yeah. Op. Uh, Op. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's five, not even close. Yeah. <laughs> and constructed, uh, like constructed wise, it's it's just on the hunt, and on the hunt is played already. Yeah. In the fox decks, so I guess this will be played too. Like and, on on the hunt, just just keeps on cycling as long as the unit who has the plus one cost on the hunt dies, right? Just keeps on cycling right. units, right? So, well, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just think that it's pretty similar to on the hunt, and sometimes it's better on the hunt. Sometimes it's worse in constructed, but overall, I would say it's just a generally good card for constructed. So it's four. Yeah, it's a, I think it's generally good too. So this is like, yes, uh, kind of a wow card for me. So let's hope that uh, we uh, get more of this. I would like to have this card in silver. <laughs> let's go. Or gold, because it's already gold right now. Like uh, with uh, its light affinity. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure, right? Next card. Uh, I think uh, Gerison also knows this. This is kind of an inside joke. Frenzy. Um, it's uh, one of the products here in the Philippines, or was one of the products, but now it's a card. Frenzy, play if you have seven or more dead one cost cards, summon a copy of this unit. So, it will be two. Um, I would put this at my, um, I would put this in my Uno, oh, wait, can I put, can I put this in my Unophobia deck? Do you know the Unophobia deck? Um, sure. Yeah, so is it possible to put this there? Well, why not? It's just pretty good here. Yeah. Uh, 
In Flick Vim, this patch is summoning 1-1 one, one dash units. Mm -hmm. It's microbots or something. Yeah. You have a lot of cards that are doing this. So getting this to have a play effect mm -hmm. will be pretty consistent to turn seven. So and if and if the play effect is uh, fulfilled, it's definitely a very strong card. So in constructed, you can construct your deck. So obviously, you will have a um, consistent microbots to turn seven. Uh, and yeah, yeah, this card is really good in constructed. It's five definitely it, for sure. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Though discovery, uh, I don't want to see this card in my hand. I think it's weak. You you can't fulfill this play effect. Yeah, usually. if if you get like this in discovery, like I mean, you're gonna be checking. I do I have seven or more dead one cost cards? Like you're gonna be checking your your uh your graveyard right there. And nope, that's not gonna proc. It's a seven cost four four dead card to me. So no. Nope. Yeah, but yeah, for constructed, yeah, it might get some play. I think it's uh, I, I already I already have one specific play for this, and let's not take out the fact that when you get two of those these frenzies, you will have two of those um, zero cost uh, life steal deal one, right? Yeah, uh, that's so that's gonna be one good effect right there. It's like. Two additional damage aside from like getting two four fours, so uh, that's gonna be basically an eight eight. That's an eight cost value right there. If you have the, if you fulfill the seven dead one cost cards, so that would be actually good. Here, flinch break, destroy all units. What do you think? Um, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's really bad. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like constructed, there are so many. So much better cards than this. It, it, it's just inefficient. Why would you spend eight, eight mana? mana. You yeah, to, you can do it for less mana than this. So no, I'm not playing this in constructed. And discovery. I'm spending eight mana to clear my opponent board, and I'm doing nothing, and my opponent just plays the board again. Yeah. Why don't I play this card? I don't know. It's one one in both modes. I I just don't see an application for this card. It's how, just bad. How about? If you like get a way to, I think this would be kind of useful for useful, <laughs> quote unquote useful for combo decks. Um, but you would have to, yeah, and again, it's uh, you would have a dead turn yet again for uh, for your opponent to just replenish the board, as you have said, like, and what I, I'm thinking, there are a lot of, uh, as you said, there are a lot of cards like. That are of, of lower value and give more board clearing potential, right? Yeah, right. So yeah, um, I'm super confident this will never see play in both modes. It it needs to go to seven mana. Yeah, at the very least. Like at eight, the staple for me would be Kasrath with dealing three damage to everything, and then like um, if they die, it would be dusted, right? Not sure. Uh, yeah, this yeah. card costs eight. Yeah. But the appeal of the Havras is that it's one-sided effect. Yeah. And this kills the both boards, so it's just never worth it. Oh, so yeah. I okay. I know this. Uh, this is in reference to one of the other card games card. Eight costs also. This is called a Twisting Nether, 8 cost. Yeah, this is cards in Warlock. I yeah, know. Warlock, yeah, Twisting Nether, right? Okay. Right. So it's also 8 cost, but that's mostly for control decks. So um, it's a bit hard to kind of use it, but on the next turn, you will have to proc something else to make, it, uh, to make yourself have the advantage. And looking at the cards right now, I'm not seeing any card that would give you the advantage on the next turn after clearing the board and after like uh, the your opponent just uh, clearing your all your board as well. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't <Yeah>. know, man. <laughs> That's just bad. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe get get some discount for it first, for uh, or just prolong the game or just. Uh, will it be ramp your mana up? I don't know, man. Um, let's let's go on to the next card. Um, Glizzbot three two five 
uh, dash when this unit takes damage add glizzy to both players hands unless they're full what is a glizzy mate wait um do you know it uh noblesse yeah i know it's uh, give a unit plus one plus one and repeat this effect for uh for each glizzy in your graveyard okay it's real complicated so it's it's basically um you would have to have this specific um function or this card in your graveyard first for it to have an effect uh it has a glizzy as an attachment so you can play glizzy on this it will be one six and then you're taking damage with this unit and mm -hmm. you can play the glizzy again and you can give plus two plus two to this unit mm -hmm. this is how it works okay so what do you think about this like um um uh, as a two cost zero five with dash stat line um is plus one to a possible just two two so it's okay for me so you would have to like uh, good make it uh stronger but um yeah what do you think about this man uh there is a possible otk with this card mm. uh if you somehow can get a lot of zaps on one turn you can mm -hmm. Uh, play Zap into this unit many times mm -hmm. and get a lot of Gleezy and this unit can go to the infinite stats but that's pretty hard to do to me I don't know I just feel like it doesn't work and on its own it's, it's basically 3 mana 1-6 mm. it's not good mm. in both Constructed and Discovery I just don't think it's have any applications okay but okay that's a pretty hard card to analyze. Maybe someone will come up with some <laughs> sort of OTK with this card. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, actually, I just learned something here that uh, Gliz means hot dog. So, well, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's I mean, card. yeah, it's based on the card. I, I just researched, I just Googled it right now. Glizzy means hot dog or sausage coming from <laughs> the Urban Dictionary. Or it can also mean Glock or a type of gun. But mostly hot dog. <laughs> so, well, yeah, okay, sure. Um, stat line is good for me. Find a way to make this work by adding some more buffs into it, maybe down the line, and that will be Gucci for this card. I think, yeah, this has some potential as well. Let's go on with the Harbinger. Um, uh, eight costs, unit wither and dash. When an ally unit dies, well, this card is in your hand. Give this card minus one cost, yes! Yes, oh yes. I think there was one deck that I fought that just kept on recycling cards from the graveyard. And this can actually work. What do you think? Um, what do you think? So uh, in Nobles? order for it to be at least okay level, you mm -hmm. need to, to play for 4 mana. Mm -hmm. And if you want it to be good, it needs to be 3 or less mana. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how are you going to achieve this. Wait. Because you need this to be in your hands. If this works, um, uh, you get a glitch break. Does it work? I mean, it's on the ally units. It, it doesn't count the enemy units. So you need to destroy your board with the glitch break. It's not really worth it. <laughs> and what if you put, so... put a lot of death effects for your side of the board and just, you know... <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it, it's really situational. It yeah, can be good if you if you're getting this card on the mulligan. Mm -hmm. But if you're drawing this card at some point of the game, yeah, it's just an eight mana five four with their dash with some attachment. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look strong. I can't really think of use of this card. Okay. Really. Okay. Okay. I I I'm kind of like seeing um uh, being like uh, the uh potentialist that i am you know i can see like you know um maybe i will use this but as you said if you want to put this in your hand uh and get some value would that you would have to have like possibly traded off some of the other units from your side of the board and it it's it's kind of contradicting for my play style too so i don't know man i don't know i mean if I get this turn three and then I already have a huge board and uh, the board is at least five units, maybe next turn if they get cleared out by a, a volley of arrows or like a four cost arrow card like that, 
then maybe I can get uh, some of this out already at turn four at, uh, as you said, a good value. So, yeah, I don't know. Nah. And the attachment on this unit is kind of too weak to me. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand why is, does it has Wexad. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even kind of look at the, the, the attachments. <laughs> because if you put it like a, like a four, and then you would uh, have to maximize it at a six, I don't know. Um, yeah, <laughs> I would uh, give it a two in discovery. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's not terrible in discovery by any means, it, it, it's just an okay card, it's like slightly less than average. Constructed, I don't see any use of it. Yeah, so yeah, I think we, let's try again for the next card. It's gonna be the Junk Golem. Summon a random gain, randomly gain plus one plus one or a trade except armor or stealth. Okay, repeat for each element in your hand. So, again. Multi element support. I think we saw a while ago set multi element support. This one, Dream Calling. But now it's going to be Junk Golem. Um Yeah, what do you think, man? Um It's kinda weird. On its own it's you can call it a five mana four four if you're playing it from the empty hand. If you have at least four elements in your hand, expected outcome is like Five mana, uh, six six with some random traits like dash, mm -hmm, wizard, mm -hmm. lifesteal, or something. So it's better than the previous card, I think, uh, that summoned a minion, uh, on the on the uh, how many elements you had the this card for four mana. Like this card is at least like consistently okay. If you have like four elements, it's not bad. It's just average card. If you have seven elements, this card becomes good. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, the point of this card, if you have like three, four elements, it's still okay. You can still play it, so it's an okay card. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in constructed, it just feels too weak to me. Mm -hmm. I I just think it's like has too little stats to play. And Discovery is just an average card, so I would give it a free. Not too exciting. So it means that you can randomly gain plus one, plus one, or a trade. This does not necessarily mean that you're going to get plus one, plus one. Does it, du right. does it duplicate, though? Like, you get already have this trait, right? No, it can get duplicate traits, so it can only get one of each trait. So one of each trait, so it will not be like, you know, it will not get like, um um uh, double of this trait but so it's going to be not uh not not possible not negation no, no negation right there and if or if it already has this trait and this trait and this trait then it can possibly go straight into plus one plus one right sure okay so yeah for sure um i don't know man um still situational i don't want to kind of set up a, a multi <laughs> i mean i've I tried to set up a multi-element uh, uh, deck, and it's kind of hard to find some synergy into it, though. Um, it's really inconsistent. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, I mean, I like more of the synergy, synergistic. This is like, you know, kind of a YOLO deck, YOLO card for me. I don't know. I don't know. Let's move on to the next card. Lap in Microneer, Summon in Death, add Micron Drone to your hand. Now I like it. Just because it says summon and death at one cost. That's the value right there. But how about you, man? What do you think? One mana, two, one stealth is a pretty good unit already in discovery. Like, it's almost good on its own. Mm -hmm. But with the summon and death effect, it becomes really good. Yeah. yeah Otherwise, yeah. it's five for me. It's really good. It's just the best insect one drop in the game right now. Yeah. I and mean, constructed. Mm. There are a lot of synergies with it. it. Just put it in your Unophobia deck, and it's good already. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at that man, lap, lap in Micronear. Like, what kind of deck? What kind of card has one you can add a Micron drone to your hand with just one cost, and then death again? Add the Micron drone. What's what? What is the stat line of the Micron drone? Uh, would you know? It's one and dash. It's one. It's one cost. One, oh, yeah. one dash. Dude, 
Uh, Unophobia. Unophobia. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this card is really strong. I think oh, it's man. Both oh, man. Oh, man. That's going to be so cool. I'd like that to happen, man. Yes. That seems really strong so far to me with all the Micron Drone synergy. Yeah. Micron Drone synergy is going to be epic. This is OP, man. I'm I'm thinking this should be a, with the stat line, it should be, it should be a two cost card. Stat line and mm. death, death effect. Yeah, for sure. How about you? I mean, yeah, <laughs> as of the moment, it's too OP. Right. Uh, I really just think it's the best one plus unit in the uh, in the intellect. Yeah. And maybe even in the game. Yeah, for sure, it's for really sure. Strong. And also can be recycled with Trinketeer. Yes! Recycle! Yes! <laughs> Oh man, this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be fun to play with. Yep, Lap and Micronier. Instantly my favorite right now, man. For sure, for sure. Let's go on to the next card. Light Mortar. Um, yeah, it says shield. After your hero loses health during your turn, return this to your hand. Wait, after your hero loses health during your turn, return this unit to hand. So you would have to think about the order effects as well. This would be a good trade card. Only that it doesn't die uh, with the shield effect. So, um, what do you think about this card, Noblesse? Uh, that's like a spell that you can play a lot of times per game. Mm -hmm, Something mm -hmm. like this. It's like Grim Reprisal, but with yeah. the echo effect. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. A lot of times in the game. Um, it's really efficient. Two mana deal three. You can play it multiple times in a turn. Like you can play it two times in a turn. So you're playing this, attacking, attacking with your hero into minion, and then playing this again for two mana. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So understand. it's four mana deal six between two minions. So, so it's okay at the very least. And uh, yeah, you, you can just play it like five times per game, and it's pretty great in discovery. It's five in discovery for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's though, yeah. uh, it just doesn't seem efficient enough. Like mm -hmm. in constructed, you you don't want to deal free for two mana. You want to do this for one mana, and this card costs two mana, and you can't return it into hand. Like if you're playing against some control or something, mm -hmm. so it's a bit conditional too. So I'm not sure if this is play in constructed, but in the aggro heavy meta, this definitely has some use. So yeah, it's free at least in constructed, and definitely five in discovery. Yeah, I would like to put this in one of my aggro decks. It says it has like a good trade potential, and as you said, it can do multiple hits, especially. Uh, if your uh, hero gets, um, you have to do it in order though. Do the light border, attack with it, get the favorable trade, attack with your own um, uh, own uh, hero, and then uh, get some damage off that attack, and then just use this again. So yeah, sure. Why not, man? It's like um, yeah, Samia meta in discovery for sure, for sure, dude, for sure. Yeah, agility cards are really good for discovery so far. Yeah, that's true. This is gonna be good. I mean, no bless. This is gonna be like these two cards are already broken. So let's go, <laughs> let's go, man. For the next card, mix solotron. Um, whenever you do draw or conjure, you draw or conjure the highest cost card possible. Now, that one cost card is gonna draw three cards for both, uh, both sides of the board, right? For both players. So you yes. would you would want to draw if you put this down at five at six, and then you, um, like uh, use that card to draw three for both. You would draw your highest cost cards. Now, what do you think about this, Noblesse? Uh, you can do some pretty disgusting things with this card if you're like a value lord type yeah. of player. Yeah, you can play this and Prismata. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, for the sure. spells you're getting are all the highest cost from the library you're getting. If you're playing Menglong's Wish with this, Menglong, yeah, Wish. yeah, Menglong's Wish. That was that was the card that I was talking about a while ago, man. Oh, it's okay. Okay, go, go. 
and then you're shuffling eight highest cards in your deck. And generally, if you're playing this, you're getting a lot of value by using the attachment. Mm -hmm. And it has pretty defensive stats too. Like it has lifesteal, it has dash. So it's an okay card even against aggro decks. Uh, so I'm just like not sure if you want to do all of this in constructed though. It's pretty, pretty slow to do. Mm -hmm. In Discovery, it's really slow too. Mm -hmm. Discovery is all about the tempo. And this card is understated, and uh, the effect isn't even positive in Discovery. So the main combo I'm seeing is playing this, playing some low-cost light unit and Prismata. That's that's pretty strong, but mm -hmm. it, it costs a lot of mana. So I'm not sure if anyone will achieve this in a constructed game, but we will see. Yeah, I think Discovery, it's an okay card only because it has dash. Mm -hmm. So it's two for Discovery at least. Mm -hmm. Constructed... Uh, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm just afraid of calling this bad, a car bad because I'm pretty sure someone will get absolutely ridiculous combo with it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm already thinking like a lot of possible ways to make this work because this... This assures you that you're getting the highest cost cards. And if you build your deck so much so that you know what you want to draw out and you already know, like, like you already have a deck list when you click on your right, right? So it's, I, I like these types of um, predictability, uh, Noblesse. So when you have a type of predictability in your decks, like it's, if it's used in a very correct way, it's going to be so powerful. <laughs> Yeah, in the some exhaust decks, yeah. this card definitely might see a play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would not call this bad. Mm -hmm. It has potential, so I will give it free for constructed. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if it has some game breaking combos. But we will see. Yeah, for sure, man. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> what about what about, what about draw cards that draw and summon? Like. Um, whenever you would draw or conjure, you would draw or conjure the highest cost card. What? Uh, he means yeah, if yeah. you will play like Ezreal, that draws oh, yeah. and summon a, uh, a unit from your deck, you will get the highest cost units for your deck. Oh, because okay. Of, because of this card. But, okay. Uh, this doesn't seem too strong to me, but yeah, this might see use, especially in Discovery. Yeah, yeah. Constructed though, um, but not, not really. But yeah, this might be used too yeah so yeah that's good uh good idea right there guys we might see i mean i mean i i if i find if i like uh test this out a bit but i could probably make something out of this i'm i'm like the um, that <laughs> school of fish yeah. is one cost unit yeah. so this yeah. doesn't work it doesn't work man you would have to like uh, put the highest cost that would be good there infernic dual boot how about dual boot what do you think Dual boots? Uh, no, mm, it's no. still a two-two minion. So no, 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 no. no, no. I, yeah, maybe down the line we're gonna we're gonna be finding something for this. But yeah, it has some potential because it's definite. It's like, you know, it's predictable. So let's see. Oh, let's go on to the next card. Oh wait, I'm gonna be moving that at the end because because there's a specific uh card for a uh, specific order for that. We go first with Pokey Male Pig. When this unit attacks, um, give it give each hero plus two health, and both players draw a card. Three cost, two five stat line. So um, that's gonna be two five. That's gonna be seven. That's gonna be one above the expected stat line with all the effects. What do you think about this card, man? This should be played in every single wisdom deck, I think. Yeah, it's really good as an five out of five tool. Yeah, uh, it it's just really efficient in, in what it does. It, it restores you a health against aggro. It removes a minion from the opponent board because mm -hmm. it has dash. Mm -hmm. And your opponent can't even kill it back because it has stealth and shroud. I just think it's really, really efficient minion for the free cost. Uh, free cost. It, it's just really efficient in both discovery and constructed. I think it's five yeah. in both modes. 
Yeah, for sure, dude. Just like you know, you see all the all the like um traits that the the Poke Mail Pig had. One, as you said, plus two health, good. Um, it has dash, yes, for trading. If both players draw a card, yes, of course, cycle. After it dashes, it has a stealth as well, so it probably will die if that's a if it has a favorable trade. Yes, yes, yes. Five out of five for me. How about um, it, yeah. Any deck, man. This would be good. <laughs> um, let's go on for the next card. It's gonna be Primal Clash. Five cost Earth spell. Draw and summon a unit. Give it dash. The enemy draws and summons a unit. Give it guard. So, any unit, right? Well, I, I, I uh, yeah. Well, this card is really weird. In discovery, that's probably the worst card in the game single-handedly i don't think there is anything worse than this if this card costed two mana it still would have been bad in mm -hmm. discovery mm -hmm. so I, I don't even want to discuss this is it, it's just very bad in discovery mm -hmm. constructed though uh you can play as type of deck where you're only playing the high cost units mm -hmm. that's right and even here like what if you're playing against even against aggro opponent? He has some high cost units in, in the attack. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it just seems so really conditional. I really think it's bad in yeah. every yeah. single application. If you're playing it with the Mixolatron, your opponent will summon a highest cost unit for himself too. Yep. So this doesn't work either. I just don't understand how can you use this card it just seems bad i mean this has a specific case you scenario wherein you would like to if you want to like summon something big maybe the big fr bfr i don't know man that's that's what that's what's seen here man but i don't know man i mean yeah yeah mix mix solitron only works for yourself that would be good no it's for a, wait it's for you only yeah for you only so but Oh, okay, okay. Then this might be okay. But you you need to still... you need to ramp first. You need to ramp up your mana first for you to have to access both uh both cards in one turn. So yeah. Yeah, it it doesn't sound worth for ten mana, so this is not strong either. I don't know, man. If it summons uh, if you're fighting like uh, if you're going against a um a an aggro and you're like uh bringing the big guns right here that would be good man well it has high roll potential for sure yeah yeah like, this might win the game on its own but this will rarely be happening i think well you can uh, you can play skitter that shuffles opponent as zomboids i don't know <laughs> And then you're playing this card, and your opponent summons a Zomboid, and you're summoning a regular minion. No, 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 this card is just bad. Yeah, I mean, you can see Geddes already knows, because Titanic is the um, is the featured monster right there. By, like, you know, that would be good um, as well. I don't know, man. This can actually work. Uh, what's the... Is, is, is Titanic the card that... Um... um I uh, no no. It's what's the card that attacks all of your opponent's uh units? It's Titanic, yeah. It's Titanic. Okay. Yes. But so it's, it's it has a play effect, so it's not a summon effect. Oh, it says it's a play effect, not a summon effect. Okay. So it's not really gonna work though. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not. So what if? Okay, just balling out here, man. What if you set it up? You use um. No, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. You would have to have a good uh, um curve set up right there, and then the next turn you would have to like um have your Mixolotron survive and just use your Primal Clash. I don't know. I don't know. I'm 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 just thinking. I'm just balling out here. But yeah, I'm thinking big units um in your deck. This would work. Like. It has some kind of support as well for like a, 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 a some specific situation where you're fighting an aggro deck that doesn't carry a lot of big minions though. So that would be good 
as yeah, well. Yeah, the problem is that you need to exactly play Azrael type of deck, and you need to exactly match against an aggro opponent for it to be good. So I, I just feel like it's way too situational to be consistent. Yeah, so, you have to test I'm it. You have to test it out first. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. <laughs> this is gonna be cool. But yeah, let's go on for the next card. Rice from scrap. Summon your top highest cost dead unit. Set it to one health. Give it dash, and attach lead to it. Summon your top highest cost dead unit. Okay, I get it. So, what do you think about this uh, card, uh, Noblesse? It's a lot of text for mortal blow effect. Mm -hmm. It's is it's basically a removal that kills an enemy unit if you have a good uh, if you set up a good enough graveyard. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. sure you can have some death or summon effects or on your units, but then it's really a late game card. You can't really play it early. Mm -hmm. So in discovery, this card is just bad. It's it's just way too situational. I can't say much about it. It's not gonna work most of the time. It's only good on like turn eight plus or something. Mm -hmm. Constructed though, it definitely has some use for sure. Mm -hmm. You can probably even OTK with this card. Mm -hmm. Like we can play hard agility mm -hmm. and we can summon some big unit like Narsuda Vest or something and give it speed boots mm -hmm. to attack into phase. So it definitely has some combo potential in Constructed. I would call it for in Constructed at the very least. It really seems good when you can construct a deck. Discovery, though, it's two at max. I would like to like go and play this uh, in Constructed, man. Because if you would, as you said, like dead effects would be such a good utility for this one. Especially those really uh, recycling uh, dead effects. But yeah. I think this will possibly be one of the cards that I will be looking forward to when it goes live as well. But yeah, look, looking at Scarabot, discard two units from your deck. Uh, uh, if it dies, uh, return your top highest cost dead unit to hand. Three costs. So what do you think about this card, man? You can read it. Uh, for Discovery, you read it as three mana, two, two, armor, dash, and draw one card. Mm -hmm. So this is an effect for discovery, basically. Like, mm -hmm. this ton of text doesn't matter. It just draws you one card, and that's it. Mm -hmm. With the death effect. Um, constructed, though, managing your graveyard may, might be pretty good with the highest cost units. So as I imagine, you can do some broken stuff with this. Mm -hmm. Like, with the previous card, too. Like, you can line up some pretty disgusting things mm -hmm. you can play phoenix plume that returns your uh, unit from graveyard yeah and uh, triggers its death effect yeah that's right so it definitely has some good use in the constructed so this card is for at least in constructed yeah discovery it's uh five Mm -hmm. It's it, it just simple, simply good cards. It's yeah, three mana, two two draw cards, mm -hmm. armor dash. It is just good. I mean, yeah, I think this is a good stat line as well for the and also with the effect that it has. It's really, really a good. But yeah, I mean, we've been seeing some gems right here in the the Clash of Inventors, man. So, um, uh, I hope some of our viewers are taking notes as to which ones will actually be much much uh useful for the upcoming expansion and now going into the self-destruct six cause attach fate to target ally unit destroy that unit it does three damage to enemies so i don't know um so basically i think uh attach fate to target uh, attach fate that draws that specific uh element right yes destroy that unit it does three damage so isn't there already a four cost card that uh that uh does three damage to all the enemies that are not its uh its uh similar element? Exactly. This card is in the game. The and that's the reason I just don't understand this card at all. Yeah. Does it cost six? Yeah. It, it might even cost three mana, and I'm not sure if I'm playing this for three mana. 
and it costs six. It's just ridiculous to me. Yeah. I don't know. At least it does damage only to the enemy board, and the enemies means that opponent's hero also taking free damage. Yeah. So it's like a Havras, if you mm. think about it, mm. but without a dusting and wizard effect. Mm -hmm. it, but in Discovery, it's so situational for six mana. Yeah. It's really hard to use. Constructed, are you really want to deal free for six mana? No, no, I don't. No, 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 no not no really. I, I think the best no. value is for the three damage for would be the eight with all the dust. Uh, the dusting effect and the lifesteal effect, right? So that would be good. But for three and uh, no, no, for three, for six, no, not necessarily. Four for two for the arrows, that would be good. And the three, four, four, three would be actually good. Uh, but no, not this one. Yeah, it just does seem really inefficient. What can I say? It mm. shouldn't cost six mana, it should cost five or four mana. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Most likely five. I don't know. It, it's definitely getting buffed. I'm super confident it, it's not a six mana card. It's probably going to go down to five, not even down to four. Because, I don't know, man. I would not use this card. Yeah. <laughs> no. Moving on. Shady Dealer. Wither and Dash. Four cards when this unit attacks and destroys another unit. Attach. Fair ticket to your here. What? Oh, yeah. Fair ticket. Yeah, it's this one. agility card. This one. Oh, wow. Amazing. So, uh, I I like the stat line. I like the effect with her in dash. Um, this is a good card for me. How about you, Noblesse? It has a lot of value packs in it. You yeah. can draw with the vial. You can draw with the ticket. For four mana, you can also trade the unit. So, this card can basically go three for one. Yep. So it gets your free cards for a cost of one card, basically. So it's a good card in Discovery. It just has a lot of going for it. Mm -hmm. it it's just a good value card. It does a lot. That's right. I mean... In Constructed, uh, this is... I'm just not sure where you want to play this. Like, you're not playing this in aggro ever. Mm -hmm. It's just not an aggressive started unit. Mm -hmm. You're not playing this in control. Like, why would you play this? It, you you don't really need a fair ticket, and you don't really need a vial. So, I don't know. This just seems like a card that designed for discovery. I don't know. For discovery, it's a five. Yeah. Constructed. I I, I would even call one. I I just don't see use of it for constructed. Looks like a good card for uh in terms of the art as well. Look at that. This is showing you like fair ticket showing you. Well, yeah, the bio, good. the art is good, but I, I think I'll find a way to put this in. Although most of my decks are already like, this is it. There's no space. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I, uh, face value in terms of the the effects that it has and the stat line looks uh looks good. Um, that one cause vial right there could uh, uh draw you uh some cards and deal damage as well that could have some support with some of the other cards that would have effects if your hero gets some more damage so maybe down down the line right so we can have some uh utility for this card but now moving on soul drain dark spell uh wither and lifesteal deal two damage to a target yes yes for a, to a target uh, specifically it might go to the to the face or to a unit give the left and right most units in your hand plus one plus one two cost yes uh, how about you man yeah. It's a really efficient card. It, yeah. It, it's just really, really good in both modes. Yeah. You can, like, two mana deal two and give plus two plus two is it's just simply good. Yep. It's five in discovery for sure. It's simply a good card. Yeah. And constructed, I think it's just good in constructed too. Like, you can yeah. even play it in aggressive decks. Yeah. Even if more mid range decks, it, it's just good. It's it good. Seems like a very efficient card to me. Yeah, it's it's it. i yeah. You're right. It's like deal two, give plus two plus two. Also has wither, possible for a life steal, maybe a finisher as well. If you don't have any other finishers, yeah, for sure that can work. So it just do everything basically. Yeah, it's like it's all rounder. It's an all rounder card right there, guys. Soul drain. It's gonna be a five for me. 
I'm gonna put it in one of my. Uh, I'm gonna be replacing one of my cards with this card. That's how good it is, man. So, for sure. <laughs> Tiamat's Rage. We have do six da damage to target enemy and each enemy next to it. Deal eighteen damage for nine. Uh, deal eighteen damage for nine to three. Uh, total to three units. Basically, it, it also can go to face. Oh yes. It can also go to face, for sure, man. So, <laughs> yes, I um, I'm, it's a yes for me. Yes, for the uh, nine, but I think it could be a bit lower. Uh, but they're thinking it's uh, since it hits three uh, three targets, it might be nine. It might be a good uh, stat yeah, for that it. Is a good spot. I think yeah, uh, yeah. the main use of this card is it. It just can be used in. Every single archetype, honestly, if you're playing aggro, you want to deal six to the opponent's face. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. If you're playing control, um, this card basically removes most of the board and also deals the face damage. Mm -hmm. So it's fine if you put it this way. If you're looking at discovery, this card is insane. It's just really, really strong in what it does. It's a one-sided player. It's like Havras, but it's bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's going to be... I, I just think it's really efficient in Discovery. And Constructed, mm -hmm. I think it's strong enough to see a play, even in like Fox aggro decks. I yeah. think it's good enough. So I would give it five in both modes. Yeah, it, it has a good, like, a good finisher feel to it. Bo uh, board clearing type potential as well. You have Wither for any big units that might not die from it. So, yeah. I like this card. It's, uh, it's an all-around card, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, it can kill your opponent. It can kill mm -hmm. your opponent's board. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's one-sided. It's never bad. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's really cool card. Has banner, too, so... <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, Basically, yeah. It's 7 damage to face. It's, uh, it's an added added benefit. Maybe, yeah, 7 damage to face, basically. And now, Torkus. Uh, inspire, spell, summon, micro drone with lead. So, um... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, it can have some value for me since it summons a micro drone. Maybe, like, um... Summon a lot of micro drones down the line it would be very, very good for my Unophobia deck. But how about you, man? What do you think about this? I think this card is good on its own. You can compare it with Oni Smith uh, mm. from Strength. Mm -hmm. Oni Smith is a free for you that deals two damage or gives plus two, plus two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's pretty similar to it because you can play Zap and you'll get a micro boat. And yeah. that's basically dealing two damage with this card. Yeah. So it's good even on its own. But it can really shine if you can play more than one spell yeah, that's attached that's to right. Torquus. So it's five in discovery because it's just it's really good on its own mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. You don't even need support. And uh, in constructed, I think it's six out of five because you can summon so many micro drones. And yes, Unophobia can deal like fifty damage in the game. Yes. Unophobia looking absolutely scary. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think I will ridiculous. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. Gerrison says two mana crystals plus two one cost spells. Yes, yes, yes. That it's will be really easy to abuse this card. I think mm -hmm. it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh I just want to play intellect and construct it with yeah. the expansion. Yeah, this and would be Unophobia. I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna play Unophobia. I'm gonna put like uh, the rabbit, um, Lapin Micron here. I'm just gonna put. I'm just gonna go ham with uh, with Torcus as well, and like um, yeah, I put them down. Save my uh, mana crystal. Put him down on four, and just I Unophobia decks has a lot of uh, one cost cards, guys. So you're you're not gonna be running out of one cost cards. Turn one, two, three, and four, four. Use your two mana crystals as well. Oh man, expand your board. Oh, dude, that's gonna be such a treat. And to deal me, it's a, one of the better cards of the expansion. Yeah, it's just really efficient. And it's like it's even good on its own. You don't even need to play any spells, you can just play Zap, and this card is good already. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a hero in a half shell. 
turtle power and let's go for the next one another turtle power unit that we have right here tortugan cook sunset give plus two plus two to a unit in your hand of each different element so this um this gives support if you have a lot of different uh, elements in your hand what do you think about this card uh discovery wise uh that's uh second best card in the game mm -hmm. you can compare it with shell officer if you know this card mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. six mana four free armor guards that mm -hmm. summons a one free in the end of the turn this minion uh doesn't have a lead but it has scorch which is better mm -hmm. and it has one more health and the sunset is uh, this sunset is absolutely ridiculous yeah super it, it ridiculous plus six plus six on average mm -hmm, mm -hmm. six mana four four guards armor that gives plus six plus six your hand to me this card is is broken i don't mm. know what can i say about this it's the best wisdom discovery card in the game for sure and it even has scorch yeah so it's even better this card is just very efficient mm -hmm. in constructed i think it's even good enough in constructed the amount of stats this color provides is ridiculous yeah i just think it, it should be nerfed to me i think this card is broken in it, every single mode it 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 is super broken man i mean imagine if you have like a pool of cards in your hand like that are cheap and gets and and it doesn't even have like a condition wherein if you have no mana left you give plus two plus two right. yeah like like something like that um then that would be a great condition like uh, uh you that would force you to like uh, use up all your cards for you to use up all your mana or maybe th play this turn six only right so that would be a good condition and yeah scorch as well so dude wither uh scorch is, has, is the damage spell that has wither right sure yeah damage with wither. yeah so that's like dude Man, how strong can you get with this Tortugan Cook? That's going to be for sure. I mean, uh, if I have... Uh, yeah, I would be playing this just to buff up all of my units. Oh my gosh. And imagine if those units have armor as well. Oh, dude, they're going to be so sticky. Um, this card is really toxic. In, uh, like The thing is, imagine if this sticks for w more than one turn. It's yeah. not a summon effect. It's sunset, so it can proc two times. Uh... This card can get out of control pretty easily. I don't know. I'm it's... pretty sure that's the best wisdom discovery card in the game. It's really, really strong. Like it's and even, you... even good in constructed. Yeah, and and also the condition is that you, you it immediately procs. So Ugh. anyway, let's move on to the card. Wild light, wild land biker. Give units in your hand dash. So that's when it dies, and um, it will mostly die. Because of the two health right there, it has a four-two line right there. And now, well, you've known a lot of four-two cards in your day or in your <laughs> in CCGs, and this will most probably die. We would probably trade this, but is it a good card though, Noblesse? Um, we have uh, some pretty similar cards to this. You have Incinerate and Wisdom that deals four damage for two mana. In heart, we have. Three mana deal four with wizard. Mm -hmm. So this card is basically four mana deal four with wizard, mm -hmm. but it also draws you a card because it has fate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it also has a death effect. Um this card is just really efficient in discovery. Mm -hmm. Four mana deal four with wizard and draw card is mm -hmm. good on its own, but it has a death effect too. Yeah. And it's not an a weak death effect. It's pretty strong. Giving dash to units is pretty strong in discovery. Yeah, dash is one of the better traits in discovery right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that's right. It's definitely a five in discovery. It's mm -hmm. one of the better cards in agility. Constructed though, this card doesn't have a use to me. You don't want to play this in aggro deck because it's it's just not good. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of stats for a cost, so mm -hmm. you're not playing this in aggro deck. And I don't see a reason to play it in the control deck, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it has a use in constructed. So I would give it a 2 in constructed only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But one of the better discovery cards. 
yeah it's like uh, it looks like a good uh discovery card indeed but yeah if but it also may might be a um as you said it's good it's a it has fate so it's fate it's going to be uh sorry it has a cycle effect as well so that would be good so yeah i uh, let's move on to the next card baneful strike i think we move uh yeah we're nearing the end guys we have a baneful strike right here give your hero wither until the end of turn add blessed strike to your hand what's blessed strike there you go blessed strike is give your hero lifesteal until the end of turn so this is these are both one cost right here so uh with two mana you get a total of uh three attack right i mean two banners for two mana right yeah in the main point of this card is that you can play those separately like mm -hmm. you can play the baneful strike on one turn and mm -hmm. then bless strike on the other turn yeah so the point is that the previous strike you want to use it for trading a, a minion on the board and bless strike might get out of control if you're getting like five ba uh, damage on hero mm -hmm. uh, there are some cards that can provide a lot of attack into hero and mm -hmm. you can life steal for a lot in one turn mm -hmm. so discovery wise this this is just efficient uh it's pretty flexible banner card that mm -hmm. you can utilize at any point of the game mm -hmm. because it has a wizard and you can even heal with life steal if you want to mm -hmm. and constructed it's just efficient too i think yeah. the main application in constructed is the life steal effect so you can heal for a lot yeah so yeah i think it's, this card is just really good in general it's simple and efficient yeah so i would rate it five in both modes yeah i think i agree like uh these are very very um highly utilizable card man and especially uh with your uh hero um uh, being have gaining this effect i mean there's one card that i'm already using that gives wither to your hero um yeah yeah. It's, yeah it's like it gives uh that's already uh one of the units but now you have a, a spell that give, can give it to you so um let's see um uh, of course let's see them in the few near future when the uh, expansion gets released i will definitely use this uh the uh and also the discovered blessed strike as well will be good so now Crocus Focus, um, Earth Spell does target unit with to summon Hoplite. Hoplite is the one, uh, the three one that that comes back if you attack uh, with glory, right? Right. No, no, no. Uh, Hoplite, uh, you're calling Skip. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Hoplite is a uh, one mana two free guards and armor. Ah uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, returns back into your hand. Okay. But with silence, it doesn't return, obviously. Oh yeah. So. I I honestly don't know. We have Mortal Blow in this game that kills a unit for four mana. Yeah. We have Encapsulate that for five mana dusts a unit and also gives you a spell. And for three mana, we want to use this card on the opponent minion usually. Mm -hmm. And this is just really inefficient to me. Mm -hmm. This should cost a mana. So I think it's just bad in both modes. It's one for me in both modes. I, I can't see a use of it. Why would you want to dust a target unit? You know. Um, hey, wait. Oh yeah, it's. I, I think it's a good removal spell. What do you no, think? No, no, no. Like, like the, uh, this is the point. Mortal blow is just better, or encapsulate is just better. Oh like, yeah. It's just really inefficient. Two free with armor and cards is is a big deal. Oh yeah, that's right. That's gonna be a. So... That's gonna be hard. That's, that's gonna be hard to remove. <laughs> yes, I, I think this card isn't any good at all. I think it should be a buff to two mana. Mm -hmm. So right. I will never play this in my constructed deck, and hopefully this is never in my discovered deck. <laughs> yes, yes, that's gonna be such a, a possible. I mean, in control, um, would you see a, kind of a use case scenario for this one? Like and there. Are... Uh, the problem is still that there are a lot of better options than this, so no, I think never. No, never, okay. <laughs> then anyway, let's go on to the next card, Dune Sur Drone Surge. 
do two damage to a target or four damage if your hero has 16 health or less summon micron drone for each damage done so you have a potential to summon two or four right so what do you think about this card uh noblesse well the main thing about this card is that it can be targeted to face mm -hmm. yeah. for four damage for three mana so that's efficient yeah the question is can we fulfill the requirement of 16 health or not mm -hmm. um if we are playing a constructed deck we are probably playing aggro deck mm -hmm. if we are playing this card and how are we going to 16 health with aggro deck mm -hmm. i'm not really sure i think we are just not going to 16 health so i'm i'm not sure how can we use this card in constructed honestly like mm -hmm. this card is better for control deck mm -hmm. even mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not an aggro so honestly i can't say good use in constructed discovery though agility loses its health pretty rapidly like Agility might be 16 health by turn 5 already because it uses its health pretty aggressively throughout the game. Mm -hmm. And this card becomes efficient really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it's really a good card in Discovery, but it's a bit overrated because you can't really play it early enough mm -hmm. for it to, be, to get like a very high impact. So I would give it 4 in Discovery. It's a pretty good card for sure. You can even play it as a two damage. It's fine too. Mm -hmm. Constructed though, uh, it's kind of underwhelming to me. I would try the two. I would like. I would still put it on my Unophobia man for sure. <laughs> well, if you're playing May, then yeah, yeah, uh, this might be good. I guess. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like you know. I would like to have as many one cost uh one cost uh units in my uh death deadpool. <laughs> that would be uh father for my unophobia. Going on to the next card, we have here a big Venus fly fly trap called Giga Bloom. Gain two mana and two max mana. Give your hero plus two health. Another ramp, man. There's another ramp. Like there's already a five cost, right? The uh, Earth spell yeah, called yes. yeah, uh, uh, yeah, right. So, uh, does this oh. overthrow it, or does it? Yeah, this card is just—it's so much better than Gift of Fire to me. Yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, it's really good. Mm -hmm. So, if you're playing Wisdom, you're playing this card. It, it's as simple as that. Yep. It's five and constructed. It's yep. really good. Discovery, um, meh, it's a meh. Ramp and discovery is just bad. I, I can't yeah, yeah, so, so much. So it's like a two in discovery, like oh. at the very best. But mm -hmm. constructed dice, yeah, it's definitely a five. It's a really good card, and it will be played in any wisdom deck. That's right. That isn't talk wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, a constructed would uh would have a benefit for this it's like another ramp tool yes why not and of course another health gain tool yes why not so for sure man um this will possibly be broken there uh, this is the glizzy that we were talking about a while ago like a uh, give target ally unit plus one plus one repeat for each glizzy in your grave so for sure but, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's not a singular card. Like yeah. you can't put this in your deck. Yeah, you have to discover it from your um Glizbot, right? So right. um another one, Mech Shroom. Return this unit to deck if this game it has plus two plus two. Wait, is there any way to recycle this mech shroom? Uh we have Elderwood mechanic in the game, so mm -hmm. we can summon a bunch of Elderwood that draws you into one cost units. Mm-hmm. And then so just... this one of the ways there are you can play like fish that draws uh oh wait the... so it returns to the tech it's not to the graveyard so yeah you need to interact with your tech yeah you so... need you need to dig your deck like um ether wing uh i think the main point of this card is to cycle the one cost with the elder woods oh elder wood um... yeah with um what what's the four cost two two that summons an elderwood at sunset? Um 
Mother Thera. Mother Thera, yeah, okay, yeah. Like, you can play a lot of Elder Woods if you want to. So, there are actually like a lot of ways you can mm -hmm. cycle for this exact unit. So, <laughs> it really feels like it can build a deck on its own. It's, it's just really efficient. And also, you can. You, you might be even like mimicking this unit if you're playing Intellect. Yeah. So you can shuffle two copies of it in your deck. You can you can do a lot of stuff with this card. I think it has a great potential. Yeah. So it's five in constructed. In discovery, you are summoning a lot of elder woods throughout the game. So mm -hmm. it's not a bad card in discovery either. So mm -hmm. I would rate it free, I think. It's not like game breaking or something. It's an okay card. Mm, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to me. Yes, in uh, Infernix says as well that's like um there's a million ways that draws death rattle minions and drill that draw one cost spells that draw a lowest cost minion, etc. Et yeah, I mean you can really build a deck specifically for the mech shroom only, right? Yes. Very, very so um if that kind of forces if uh this uh the meta gets defined by the mech shroom, that kind of forces your opponent to possibly get some dusting options on his side of the board. But so, it has lead, yeah. so you yeah. can't really do this. There is one counterplay to this card. Uh, there is a card in the game called Boggy Boggy that steals a one cost unit from your opponent. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, this might be like really good if you're playing Boggy Boggy in your wisdom deck. But other than this, this card doesn't really have much of the counterplay because of the lead effect. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would not have an effect. Oh, man. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, that would be the, the best deck counter for that. But now, let's go on to... Ooh, shiny. Conjure three one-cost cards at the end of this turn. Does any of those cards left in your hand? So, basically, um, uh, this has the... In one of the other CCGs that I'm playing, it has the word fleeting. It has... Uh, any fleeting card gets um, dusted if they are not being used during that specific turn. So, again, this has... I'm looking at this man, I'm and I'm thinking, uh, can it be used to with this card? I mean, sure, it can be. Yeah. It, it just, it's just an intellect card, so it works as a unophobia fool, like... It shuffles four one-cost cards into into the graveyard total. So this card and oh. three one-cost. So it's four cards in graveyard for Unophobia. Mm -hmm. So it should be great if you're playing Unophobia deck. Just put this in your deck. Mm -hmm. And in Discovery, it just seemed like an efficient card to me. It just kind of does a lot for one mana. Yeah. Like, give, you, give yourself... Three one cost cards. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can play them in one turn. Just keep this card until turn four. Mm -hmm. and it's good. So it's not open discovery or something. It's just okay. So it, I will give it four in discovery. Mm -hmm. And constructed, it depends if Unophobia deck will be good or not. Mm -hmm. It looks like Unophobia will be good. So this is a four or five in constructed for me. Yeah, for sure, man. It's like um. I'm seeing this and I'm say, saying to myself, and three one cost cards is not specific to a unit or a spell. It's a, it can be either of those cards, right? So, but yeah, the the cost would still be even, like a one cost card, make maximize it at turn four uh, when you have four mana, and that's it. That's gonna be the best case use a use case scenario for this card. Yeah, good card indeed. But now. Sonic Jammer, summon until your next turn all enemy spells and enchants have plus two cost. So this is basically a combo disruptor, right? Uh, am I reading this correctly, uh, Nobles? Sure. I think the main application of this card in Constructed is that you're playing an aggro deck mm -hmm. and you want your opponent to play his burning aid or something one turn later. Mm -hmm. So your opponent is counting to clear your board with burning aid, and mm -hmm. then you're just playing this card, and that's game over. Mm -hmm. He can't play his AoE at all. So that's a that that's it. It's a five and constructed. It, it just an after include in the aggro deck to me. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. really efficient. 
you can disrupt so many key turns for your opponent if he's playing control. Mm -hmm. Even if he's playing aggro, it still can be very efficient. Yeah. Discovery... It's a free mana free free with cards. It doesn't have a summon effect in Discovery, basically. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just think it's like really underwhelming. In Discovery, you can just play minions instead of spells, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So Discovery, I will give it two. Well, it, it, it's a free mana free free, so it's not terrible, mm -hmm. but nothing too spectacular. So two in Discovery, five in Constructed. Yeah, I mean, this says, uh, you're, you put a good point there, that there would be like a possible uh, clear turn on the next turn. So that would be uh, disrupted if you have a board presence already. So yeah, very good card indeed. Um, now going into this team knight, four unit, four cost unit with shield and four four as well and dash. Kind of a vanilla, but yeah, all the stats are there. Uh, what do you think about this card? I mean, discovery-wise, I think it's okay. <laughs> discovery-wise, it's six out of five. It's yeah, the best card in the game. Yeah, it's the strongest card. It's not even debatable. Mm -hmm. And uh, cons uh, okay, so let me put it this way: I'm pretty confident it's not getting printed as four four. It's mm -hmm. definitely getting nerfed be before the expansion drops <laughs> because this card is. Um, is an, is unfair. Mm -hmm. it, it just does way too much for four mana. So if it goes like this mm -hmm. uh, in the expansion, if it's really four mana for four dash shield, mm -hmm. it go. If you're playing strength in constructed, you should put this in your deck, and mm, yeah, it doesn't even sure. matter what are you playing. Yeah, it, and discovery. If mm -hmm. you have this in your deck, you're happy. Yeah, I think you it know. Just, it, yeah, it, it, it it's good cards. It's a good card, man. It's like, you're seeing like um four four that's i mean when, when we talk about stat lines for mana um it's usually one is to one like uh four cost four four and then add something else to make it more uh playable and this is basically a free trade guys free trade yet again steam knight has a shield right there dash find a unit which has at least four health kill it off and then survive and wait for your opponent to find a way to take it out on the next turn. That's it, right? That's gonna be another a uh, way for your uh, a problem for your opponent. So yeah, that's, that's nice, man. I like it. Yeah, this, this card should be played in every. I mean, absolutely every single strength deck. If yep. you don't play this card, you you're wrong. You should play this. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's, it's gonna be one of the staples right there. Uh, we have a tireless iteration uh, metal spell. Give target ally unit this spell straights and plus one plus one. That's it. So you're going to give it to, a, uh, to an ally unit. When an ally unit dies, attach a spell from your grave to your hero as two cost with that unit straights. So I'm I'm kind of confused with this kind of uh, interaction. Um, give it to a unit, then it dies and attaches to your hero, uh, and then. Two cost, uh, you can activate it as two cost. So it's kind of on the hunt, but uh, sure, kind of, yeah, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it, it, this doesn't go beyond two cost, so yeah, it's always two cost. Later. Oh, that's a good point, man. It's always two so, cost, uh, it's cycling, it's uh. I just don't get this card. I I don't know what what is what is it trying to do. I I, I don't understand. My, I'm getting tired from reading this card. It's not tireless. It's tiring. It, I mean, cards. I'm it it basically says um that will be what give target ally unit dispel traits. What what traits, man? And uh, it's... traits uh like when you have. A unit died on your board, and if it had traits, this spell get the unit traits, traits. that died. Okay, so uh, but okay, I, mean, I, I just don't understand this card. I think it's just useless. I don't know. It just doesn't do anything. I don't understand why would you play this card ever. It's in it... constructed in in discovery. It's one mana. Give plus one plus one. 
sure it, it's bad i just don't understand this card i think it's it's they like i wanted to to just... make a card with a lot of text on it and that's it uh, i don't <laughs> see any, anything going for this card they, they wanted to make a card with a lot of text in it <laughs> You know, I know a card with a lot of text in it. It's another game, but yeah, but this, um, uh, it's two cost plus one plus one. Add another trait, basically, if it goes in cycle back into your hero. So, I don't know, man. Um, it's some, something useful to me. I don't know. Sometimes I would want to maintain one of my heroes attached uh, spells or attached, I yeah, but, and then destroys that. And it replaces that, so I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, maybe someone will find a way to use this effectively. I think this is going to be our last one. It's called Tome Golem. Uh, inspire one cost. If the card is a unit, summon a copy of it. Okay. If the card is a spell, displace a copy. Same target, if any. All right. Uh, I would see this uh, kind of, um, again, uh, Man, I like my Unophobia already, man. So this is gonna be <laughs> a late game card for me. So, but yeah, what do you think about this card, uh, Noblesse? Uh, there is a possible use of it. You can play Prismata on one turn, get a lot of one cost spells from Prismata, and then play this card, and all the spells from Prismata get doubled because they all cost one mana. Mm -hmm. So that's a one application of, the, of this card. Mm -hmm. The other application is just play, as you said, Unophobia attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be an okay card. It's an okay started card. It's 7 mana, 5, 7. Mm -hmm. So it's not bad. And if you're if you're triggering this Inspire at least one time, it's already value. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, that's an okay card. And uh, I'm if I played more constructed i would probably see some combination with this card yeah. but there is definitely some otk i'm pretty sure you can yeah with this card. but i don't know how i mean but there is nothing for sure i mean there is indeed an otk but does it uh when a card gets a disc uh discount like gets to become zero cost does it activate the tome golem i'm no, oh. you, it needs to be exactly one cost. That's, so, that's the thing. Okay, so it needs to be exactly one cost, not not a one cost that uh, uh, not a zero cost card that used to be one cost, right? So, it has to have that specific uh, uh, cost. But I'm if I, if I remember correctly, there is a card that um, puts banner to all your cards. A century key, right? Yeah. So that uh, puts banner to all your spells, right? The, all your spells on yes. your hand. So this can pass. Up. Can that work with this? But you can't get double banner. It's only one banner on the cards. Okay. So this doesn't really work. But if it yeah. if you summon that spell, and then that's already a low cost spell already that possibly can be one cost. Then you can actually gain another one. Then you gain the banner again for your uh, the banner, the increased attack to your for your uh, hero. Well, like uh, still the main problem, you can't get the banner two times. It's only one time. Oh, okay. One spell can get more than one banner. So as I I have three applications for this card. It's Prismata. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a high cost spell for one cost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we are getting them repeated. Mm -hmm. Second use is generally unophobia deck. Yeah, unophobia. But this might be too slow, so I'm not sure. And the third application is some really weird OTK that I can't mm -hmm. think of, mm -hmm. but definitely exists. Okay, okay. So this card surely should see some sort of experimentation. So I should give this for in discovery uh, i mean in constructed at least discovery it just it's an okay unit i can't say much more than this it's a uh, free for discovery it's it's okay uh, it's never game breaking it's never too bad so mm -hmm. yeah it's a uh, free for me yeah I, yeah this is gonna be like uh, i'm kind of excited though with my autophobia deck like imagine 
summoning Tom Golem, uh, and then I summon my. Where is it? I summon my. Where rabbit? is my, my rabbit? Where's my rabbit, man? Uh, it was before, right? Yeah. And then I summon my uh, ra rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. And then it summons another one. And then it summons. Uh, I can summon a micro drone if I have enough uh, yeah, mana. There yeah. will be a lot of going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So many one costs. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm excited, man. This is gonna be so, such a freaky uh, gameplay right there. But that's gonna be it, I think, guys. Um, we... Is this the last card? Are you sure? I yeah. think there was one more. Uh, what's the last card? Well, uh, did you saw? I think. Did I mine everything? I'm what? pretty sure there are some few more cards. Uh, let me see. Can you see? Uh, can you show me? I think. Let me check uh, if this is the last card that uh, has been released by a Skyweaver. Where you go? Uh, card suggestions? No. It was was given out in the Discord as well. Yeah, revealed COI cards. Okay. So we have uh, Daredevil Pin. We have Glitch Break, Wispot, Soul Drain, BFR. Discover, Pokey, Male Pig, Crystal Restorer, <clears throat> Wildland Biker, Double Trouble, Steam Knight, Blessed Strike, Baneful Strike, Crocus Pocus, Titration, Tom Golem, Lapin, Microneer, Shady Dealer, Mixolotron, Fair Ticket, Lemur, Glizzy, Gig Giga Bloom, Sonic Jammer, Mechroom, Drone Surge, Dream Calling, Dash for the Cup, Draco Impact, Harbinger, Dorkiss. Tiamat's Rage, Bonnie Snatcher, Rise from Scrap, Driver Sniper, Desert, Go Desert Golem, Drill Bot, we already had that, um, Junk Golem, O Shiny, Primal Clash, Self Destruct, Scarabot, Tortugan Cook, Buster oh, Square. Oh, I got it. There are five extra revealed cards, and they are not on the Discord. They are on, the f on an official Skyweaver site. Where? Uh, uh, one moment. Let's see. Um, let me see if we can get to that area. Where it's is on skyweaver.net and uh, okay, I can give you a link one moment. Okay, give me a link. I already have this on the Discord. Let's get to see uh, the other one that um, is going to be given away or given by uh, Noblesse right now. Is it skyweaver.net? Uh... So you need to go into Clash of Inventors on the top. Okay, it's loading up. You can do this, man. Load up. <laughs> Why is it not loading up? Is it the site? Because this happened to be uh, a while ago, too. I don't know. The site is loading for me, too, for some reason. Did we break it? You know the the loading screen, the 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 image screen is like so nineteen nineties for me. That's how the screens used to load. Well, uh. <laughs> it, it really has its aesthetics. I like it. <laughs> this one, this one, like the one that's loading right now, like slowly loading from top to bottom. Tuck, 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 tuck. That's how my how fast my internet was, like uh, fifty six kbps before, like uh. <laughs> That's how we used to load up uh, the images, man. Hey, it's not loading, man. I think it's a surprise. Uh, I was able to load the page. Um, I can try to show you the cards. Uh, it, it's not hard to do. Uh, okay, can you okay, show one moment? Okay. Uh, I'll send you them on the Discord. Okay, okay, got gotcha. you. Uh, that's the first card. Okay, send it to me. Chromosaur. Okay, Chromosaur. That's the second card. Download that. Hey, why is there an extra card, man? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Chromosaur. What's the second card? There you go. Uh, second card is Blood Letter. 
Okay, there you go, getting the blood letter. Uh, third card is Overdraft. Okay, opening the the image right now, over at the, the first card, it's 1990s internet, what a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> man, 1990s, 56 kbps, man, that's the fastest that you can get. But wait, let's, let me open the first one first. Um, that has been sent by... Here we go. So we have here Chromiosaur, and it says, um, Give 7 cost and higher units in your hand and deck minus 2 cost. So this has some support for the... I, I've seen like a lot of 7 cost cards like uh, supported uh, in the previous... Uh, no, previous uh, cards. I did think there was one card that was been, has mentioned that if you have a 7 cost card. This might be right. uh, synergistic with that. What do you think about this card, man? Well, it looks pretty efficient in Constructed if you will be able to play some RAM deck with high-cost units. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's obviously good. You want to play this in your deck. So it depends if this deck is any viable or not. If the deck is viable, you will play this card. It's, it, it's just good. Man, man I'm, uh, I am... I am... I am getting some kind of flashbacks with Big Druid, man. Have, sure. have you played Big Druid? Because this uh, basically yes. basically kind of um, has the same aesthetic from Big Druid, you know, especially with the Earth effect as well. But yeah, good stat. I like this card. It's pretty cool. Like, yeah, it's good. You want to play big minions with it, obviously. And if this will be possible, then this card will be one of the better cards in the deck. Yeah. Discovery, it's fine. It has dash, it has a neat attachment. Mm -hmm. Summon effect is pretty, might be useful some of the time. Sometimes it's not useful, sometimes it's, it is. So it's free for Discovery mm -hmm. by me. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's good, very good in Constructed, dude. So yeah. Yeah, so it looks good. If you can build the Zack. How about this one? Blood Letter. Two cost, uh, two cost uh, unit after your hero loses health during your turn. Do one damage to the enemy hero and gain plus one plus one. Yes! And it also has life steal. So when you're dealing one damage to your opponent, it also heals you for one. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, uh, this is a good two cost card. And it also has a vial. Yeah. yeah, so you can buff it to plus two, plus two with Vile and attack into enemy minion. Yeah. The very least. So, yes, it seems efficient. Like, you can uh, describe it as free mana, free, free, with yeah. stealth and lifesteal that deals two damage to your opponent and draws your card. So, it's just very efficient, right? Very, yeah, indeed. It's like a very, very efficient card. And, yeah, for sure, it's going to be good. Is it good for your discovery? Yes, it's it's really good for discovery, I think. And yeah. It also has a snowball effect. If it survives for more than one turn, it can get out of control. Oh yes, yes for sure. <laughs> Man, yeah. Uh, you would uh, would you buff this with another card just to make it survive more? Yeah, it's possible. You can even give it shroud, for example. Yeah. So shroud, yes, yeah, for sure. It's good. Yeah, we're going on to the next card, the Overdraft. Attach chains to the lowest health unit. Do one damage to it. Repeat for each card in your hand. So, wait, wait. You are just targeting one lowest health unit and you're spending four? But it repeats every single time you have an extra card in your hand. But, you, so but it... you're targeting just one, man. Uh, it's not even a targetable spell. You can just play it. Uh, you don't even have to choose a target for it. I mean, I mean, you're just killing one unit. Well, you can kill your whole opponent's board. Oh, we... it's a defile. So you can uh, kill your whole opponent's board as long as you have uh, a lot of cards in your hand. So basically, since your opponent, uh, since this guy already has. Um, around um, one, two, three, four, eight cards on hand. 
he can do eight damage, right? It's even nine because it it works first and then repeats itself, so it's uh, nine. Nine, if you oh. have eight cards. So it's a control. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really good card. It, it, when you you're playing this, enemy board just dies. Basically, yeah. Every single time. The only problem with this card is that it also can target your own board. Mm. It says lowest health unit. It's not enemy unit. It's any unit. Any so unit. So your own are units too. So you can kill your own board with it too. Yeah. So it's pretty good and constructed because yeah. wisdom is usually a control prism, and this card is just really efficient. It's usually killing opponent boards every single time for four mana. Mm -hmm. Discovery. Uh, it's pretty situational because you need to be losing the board. And most of the time, if you're losing the board, you're not winning. So this card is kind of comeback card or something. So it's a free for me in Discovery, since it's very situational, but it can be good. In Constructed, I would even say five. If you're playing Wisdom, play this card. It's good. Mm -hmm. But I have a problem with this. It doesn't do any damage to your armor units to any armor units but it has chains it uh, it attaches chains first. oh yeah uh chains first and, okay yes oh so that's when it has the uh okay okay i get it i get it now i was like, wondering on like... the video like you, you can see the opponent's board it has armor units on it so it's like there is a gladiator and yeah. uh, it it's showcasing that gladiator dies too from yeah. the spell yeah that would be good man so yeah good clear right there Going on to the next card, it's gonna be Scrap Strosity. Does target hero stop to highest cost uh, dead card? Uh, units to gain their combined power, health, and traits. Okay. So, um, wait. Does target hero stop to highest cost? So basically, it's a clear. Mm, no, not really. It targets your opponent's graveyard. Wait, wait. Highest cost or... dead. Okay, no, okay. I, I'm it's not either the graveyard. graveyard or opponents. Opponents graveyard. Okay, so it can be the hero. It can be the opponents graveyard. So if you would have had to clear big units, that would be cool, right? But uh, yes, you can get a, like this card can be a, like up to twenty twenty in stats, and you can give it speed boots, and you can smack opponents hero for twenty with this card, and okay. it can also has a life steal. So you can smack for 20 and heal for 20 with speed boots. Okay, I get it. So this might be a recovery uh, spell after... Uh, do you remember the one, the card that destroys everything? Sure. Can it be a, Can this be a recovery card after the fact? I mean... It's... Uh... I don't know. It, it, it just uh, discovery wise, it's an efficient card because it's like 10 10 in stats on mm -hmm. average. Mm -hmm. So it's just okay and it has some traits. Constructed, like you can build up some OTKs with giving this uh, charge mm -hmm. with speed boots. Mm -hmm. And like, but generally it looks too situational. If you're not trying to OTK your opponent, this card is not really useful, mm -hmm. but it has a lot of stats. Like, you can target your own graveyard or your opponent's graveyard, so it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. This card is okay. I mean, that's going to be... I, I mean, I, I, I can see some kind of but some kind of use to it, but the top two dead units to gain their combined power is kind of a, a bit iffy for me. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's going to be targeting specific cards that I want to gain, right? The effects. But, yeah, I'm... Well, I'm yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm still not sure. I'm on a fence in this. Yeah, it's a weird card. It really depends if someone will be able to build a, an OTK deck with this. Mm -hmm. But that's possible. Yeah. And we're moving on to the last card. It's going to be Micromanager. After a one cost or less ally unit is summoned, give it plus one power and attach shield to it. And it has Micro Swarm. So it's, it's a it has a drone uh, synergy to it. <laughs> Micro drone synergy. Uh, 
Uh, I just want to mention, mm -hmm. this card is... Uh, I had 6 out of 5 cards in Discovery. This card is 7 out of 5. This, yeah. This is single-handedly the best Discovery card, and it's not even close. This card is absolutely ridiculous. It's insane. Yeah, it's it is. 5 mana free free armor that deals 6, and all the microbots are living on the board because they have shield. And they have plus one. Oh man, it's gonna be like it, oh man. Yes, this card is uh, is ridiculous and constructed. It's five out of five. Just put this into your Unophobia deck mm -hmm. because microbots are one cost. Yep, Unophobia guys, watch out for that. This is gonna be such a good uh, good deck to play. And uh, this is the last one. This is the last one, right? Yes, yeah. this is the last one. Okay, so going to the last one. Again, guys, uh, if you uh, are, have just watched, we just ran down all of the cards for the Clash of Adventures and how uh, maybe uh, gave our two cents on how they can be used or how powerful they are in terms of the expansion. And yeah, thank you. We're now thanking... Uh, our special guest, of course, uh, Noblesse, for giving his time to us, and yeah. thank you, man. And thank, thank you for having me. Thank you, man, for uh, uh, giving us your time and sharing us your opinions, of course, and your insight as well on as to the cards for the Clash of Adventures, which will be released when again, uh, Noblesse? It's July 7th. Yep. Nah, and that's going to be, and there's going to be a test play for Skyweaver, I think July 3 or July 4 over uh, at... Yes, the... I'm gonna be commenting this. Yep, there's gonna be one there, and uh, yep, we are now going to go uh, ahead, guys, and uh, we. it's good that we have had this talk with Noblesse just to get some more uh, a feel of what we're going to be expecting for the Clash of Inventors as well, and uh, I'll be sharing the... Um, the aggregated, um, how do you say this? Aggregated uh, PowerPoint, if you would want, over at Twitter and uploading this on YouTube as well. So if you uh, were not able to watch, well, hopefully uh, you can rewatch it over at YouTube. Thank you again, guys, for watching. Thank you again to Noblesse for also blessing us with his appearance here. And any last words, man? Um, this expansion looks pretty fun to play. Every single prism got its uh, theme. Strength got big units, wisdom got elements in hand, agility got losing health on your turn, intellect is onophobia, heart is heart, graveyard, <laughs> as usual. So, yeah, this looks fun. I'm looking forward to play this. Yeah, this is going to be such a treat with this kind of expansion. And uh, oh, every expansion is actually something that we uh we all we as players always look forward to guys so again thank you for watching this stream uh i'm exalter ph and this has been noblesse so we're going to be signing off for skyweaver and that's it guys um uh just keep playing of course and get uh, get your rank on with skyweaver a uh, very very nice uh ccg to play so you can own your cards as well this is pretty uh, this will be also uh, available, uh, Flash of Inventors, July 7th. And uh, do watch also Noblesse on July 3 for the test play as well. Bye, guys.